Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. American Comics. Opening the Game with Wolf. Chapter 61. Banner brought Betty to the Academy, logged into his special account through the computer in the Academy, and then contacted Mr. Blue. After obtaining the other party's location and reservation, he took Betty to leave. What he didn't know was that he was discovered by the military when he contacted Mr. Blue. At this moment, the army was on the way. Not long after, several armored vehicles rushed into the academy. After Banner found this scene, he ran away directly without any thoughts of taking Betty. Her father is Ross, and no one will hurt her. If she followed him, she might be hurt. After running into an open-air library, Banner, who already knew that he could not escape, swallowed the USB flash drive that stored his experimental data into his stomach, and a team of soldiers blocked the entire library. Then he began to fire hypnotic gas into it. As a result, a green giant broke through the wall of the library and appeared in everyone's sight in the next second. Then he jumped on the armored vehicle. The armored vehicle could not withstand the Hulk's jump and was instantly crushed. The soldiers inside died directly. Bang. Bang. All the soldiers started shooting at Hulk, and the machine guns on the armored vehicles even suppressed Hulk for a short time. Soon, even the tanks entered the academy and started to attack Hulk. A shell hit Hulk, and the terrifying power blew Hulk away. Then there was a continuous bombing, and many soldiers attacked Hulk with RPGs. In a short period of time, Hulk was completely suppressed by the military's weapons. When Hulk stood up, he found the target and jumped hard, stepping hard on a tank. Then he tore off the entire barrel of the tank and used it as a weapon to continuously smash the wreckage of the tank under him. He didn't let him go until he smashed the tank into a discus, and then threw the barrel in his hand, hitting another tank inside, bending the barrel of that tank, and it couldn't continue to fire shells. Boom. Then more and more soldiers and armored vehicles appeared, and various weapons attacked Hulk continuously. Not only tanks, but also armed helicopters were dispatched. Ross was determined to capture Hulk here. Even he came to the academy in an amphibious armored vehicle. Bronski rushed into the battlefield in a military jeep, holding a grenade launcher and began to attack Hulk continuously. He was extremely confident after being injected with super serum, and he firmly believed that he could be on par with Hulk. He kept provoking Hulk. Boom. The armed helicopter began to attack Hulk with machine guns, and with the fire suppression of the ground forces, Hulk's anger continued to rise, and then his body became bigger again. Staring at the armed helicopter in the sky. Roar. With a roar, his legs were slightly bent, and he jumped up and instantly came to the same height as the armed helicopter, grabbing the landing gear of the armed helicopter. He dragged it to the ground fiercely, because there was an armed helicopter next to Hulk, which made the ground troops stop firing. Otherwise, it will not be Hulk who will destroy the helicopter, but themselves. The pilot saw Hulk trying to destroy the helicopter, so he quickly controlled the helicopter to take off, and then began to rotate, trying to throw Hulk out. But Hulk's strength is not much weaker than the helicopter, and he held the helicopter tightly. He punched the helicopter's propeller, and the propeller attacked by Hulk was instantly destroyed, and then the entire helicopter began to fall to the ground. Boom. With a loud bang, the helicopter was blown into wreckage, and Hulk climbed out of the wreckage. His eyes were fixed on the tanks and armored vehicles that kept attacking him. After Hulk appeared, all the soldiers began to attack again, and the tanks aimed at Hulk again, without any hesitation, and fired shells instantly. Hulk was blown away by the tank again. Although he was blown away, he was not injured at all, and there was not even a wound on his body. Bronski was even more confident in using a howitzer to chase Hulk and attack him. Because of the injection of serum, his physical fitness was far superior to that of ordinary soldiers. After the howitzer was finished, he came to Hulk and then took out the small pistol on his waist to attack Hulk. This directly angered Hulk. When he was about to chase Bronski, a shell came and Hulk directly used his body to block it. Bronski, led it into the attack range of the sonic weapon. Yes. General. At this time, two special armored vehicles appeared again. There was an infrasonic transmitter on the two armored vehicles, which was similar to the one used by Obadiah before, but with greater power. This one is also Ross bought it from Tony because Stark Industries had closed its weapons manufacturing department long ago. So he had to use a favor to get Tony to make it for him, just to use it against Hulk. 
After Hulk took the shells, he began to chase Bronski, leading him to the attack range of the sonic weapon, and finally Bronski jumped with all his strength. Buzz. The sonic weapon was turned on, and two invisible ripple-like sonic weapons instantly enveloped Hulk's body. Even Hulk was in unbearable pain after being attacked by the sonic weapon. Even Bronski just now was affected by the sonic weapon. His two ears had begun to bleed, but he didn't care at all, looking at Hulk with a fanatical and crazy face. At this time, Hulk tore two pieces of iron wreckage from the wreckage of the armored vehicle next to him and threw them at the two armored vehicles with sonic weapons. The two sonic weapons were instantly destroyed. General Ross looked very ugly when he saw this scene. He didn't expect that Hulk could actually destroy sonic weapons. Under the sonic attack of the sonic weapon, he can still move, but the strength of Hulk makes him more fascinated and satisfied. Seeing Hulk being attacked by the army, Betty came to an amphibious armored vehicle. Let him go, he is Bruce. Dad. Impossible, he is the property of the military. Take her away from here. If anything happens to Bruce, I will never forgive you in my life. As Betty finished speaking, Ross came out of the amphibious armored vehicle, answered Betty with a serious face, and then waved to the two soldiers next to him, and then they grabbed Betty's arms and walked back, asking her to leave this place. Betty looked at Ross's determined eyes and shouted at Ross in collapse. Ross was not moved at all, but the female officer next to him glanced at Ross. At this time, a red gold figure and a silver white figure fell from the sky and appeared directly in front of General Ross. The visitors were Tony and Zhang Bai. When Ross asked Tony to make sonic weapons, they had already begun to pay attention to Ross's every move in order to know the location of Hulk. Tony Stark. Zhang Bai Horst. Are you here to help me catch this monster? No, 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 we are just here to prevent him from rushing out of the campus and causing some unnecessary casualties. No, I will catch him. Looking at the two sets of steel armor falling in front of him, Ross also knew who the visitor was, and spoke with a slightly puzzled tone, although his relationship with Tony was okay. But the other party would never interfere in military affairs, and he would not allow Hulk to fall into the hands of others. Tony and Zhang Bai's mind was naturally to invite Hulk and Banner to join the Illuminati, but they did not intend to tell Ross. Ross just found an excuse to get by. He didn't believe a word of Tony's words. He looked at the two of them deeply and then looked at the Hulk on the battlefield. Iron Man and Silver Man are indeed strong, but he doesn't think they can compare with Hulk. Even if the other party wants to take down Hulk, it will not be an easy task. This time he mobilized a lot of troops and heavy weapons, and even tanks and armed helicopters were driven out. Hulk has not been taken down yet. Even Iron Man may not be able to withstand such firepower. So Ross is not worried at all that Tony and Zhang Bai will snatch Hulk here. Tony curled his lips and looked at Ross without saying anything, and also turned his eyes to the green big guy in the field. Boom. After this, Bronski took out the grenade from his waist and threw it at Hulk. The power of the grenade was not enough to hurt Hulk, but Bronski threw it at the eyes. It was enough to temporarily block Hulk's vision, and then picked up the rifle on the ground and started to approach Hulk and shoot continuously. Zhang Bai was very surprised to see this scene. Bronski did look much stronger than ordinary soldiers. But he didn't think he could fight Hulk, and he was holding a rifle close to Hulk. He doubted whether Bronski had a brain problem. Bang. Sure enough, the next second Hulk came to his senses and kicked Bronski in the chest. Then he was kicked out 10 meters by Hulk, rolled on the ground for a distance, and crashed under a big tree and lost consciousness. Seeing this, even Tony looked at Ross in surprise. There is no doubt that Hulk is powerful, why can the opponent be so arrogant to such an extent, and actually approach Hulk? If you attack Hulk from a distance, you can temporarily suppress the opponent through firepower, but close combat is just to die. Boom. Even Ross looked at Bronski's audacious behavior speechlessly, with an ugly face. Then he waved to the soldiers behind him, and the tanks and armored vehicles began to attack Hulk again. There was even an armed helicopter flying not far away. Even Tony found it incredible that such a powerful firepower was mobilized in Manhattan, New York. This is Manhattan, the rich area of New York. Ross actually mobilized so much heavy firepower. If it landed in a rich villa area, Ross's official hat might be taken off. The congressmen and presidents of the United States would be sprayed to death by those rich people. 
The entire government is largely composed of capital and chables. Even many presidents and congressmen are pushed up by chables and capital. It can be said that the entire government is very corrupt. If there are any major casualties in the rich area, even if Ross is a lieutenant general, he will have to go to military court. But Ross can't care so much at this time. He is ready to go all out to capture Hulk. When he develops a powerful super soldier, he believes that all his charges will disappear. But Hulk obviously won't let him have his way. The armed helicopters in the sky continue to attack Hulk who is destroying armored vehicles and tanks on the ground. The terrifying machine gun bullets poured down towards Hulk, but they did not cause any harm to him. Most of the ground forces were about to be destroyed by Hulk, which also caused the armed helicopters to start launching missiles, but they were small-range missiles. Ross was still a little restrained in Manhattan. He did not dare to use the large-range missiles during the war. Otherwise, once it was fired, it would affect the area within one kilometer. This power is not strong. If the power is a little bigger, the entire Manhattan area will be affected. Even if the armed helicopters launch, it cannot stop the tenacious vitality and unlimited potential. Hulk. Roar. The next second, Tony and Zhang Bai felt bad because Hulk had set his sights on their armored vehicle. He roared and rushed in this direction. The wreckage of the armored vehicle and the buildings of the academy that blocked him were all smashed. Ross also felt bad and ordered the soldiers around to shoot to stop Hulk. Shit, how did he rush over here? Keep your distance, none of us can beat him in close combat. Tony cursed inwardly and immediately prepared for battle. Zhang Bai next to him told Tony to keep a distance from Hulk, otherwise he would be caught by Hulk and torn in half, not to mention Tony. Even he couldn't withstand Hulk's huge force. Hulk rushed to the front and clenched his fists and smashed the armored vehicle fiercely. Tony and Zhang Bai had already used the flight function of the armor to get into the air. There was no one in the armored vehicle, and Ross retreated under the cover of several soldiers. Tony flew into the air and began to attack Hulk. His arms and shoulders slowly opened, and the micro-missiles locked onto Hulk and rushed out instantly. Explosions continued to be heard, and Zhang Bai used his own magnetic control and the magnetic control on the magnetic armor to control the wreckage of the armored vehicle not far away. These wreckages were stretched into chains, and these chains were controlled to bind Hulk, but it obviously had no effect on the terrifying Hulk. Zhang Bai was not surprised by this situation. He did not intend to go all out at the beginning, but was just preparing to paddle. Tony wanted to know the gap between his armor and Hulk very much. He kept attacking Hulk while flying in the air, and used the flexibility of his armor in the air to dodge attacks again and again. He could deal with Hulk for a while, and the armed helicopters in the air could only float in the air and dared not launch an attack. Because Iron Man and Silver Man are fighting with Hulk, it would be a disaster if they were hit. Iron Man is Tony Stark. He may not be able to do anything to General Ross, but he can still deal with him as a helicopter gunship pilot. And the seemingly harmless Silver Man is a ruthless man who killed a congressman in public. If a soldier like him really offends the other party, he is probably not far from death. So he was very tactful and did not continue to attack. He stayed in the air and waited for Tony and Zhang Bai to distance themselves before attacking Hulk. After realizing that he could not attack Tony, Hulk turned around and rushed towards Ross's position, which scared Tony and Zhang Bai. It seemed that Hulk had already hated Ross. When Hulk ran towards Ross, the helicopter gunship in the air began to vent its firepower. Boom. Despite this, Hulk still pursued Ross relentlessly. Tony and Zhang Bai also controlled the armor to fly in the sky above Ross and others. Soon, Hulk rushed to Ross and others. He jumped high, raised his fists above his head, and smashed Ross with the help of the falling gravity and his own strength. No. Betty, who was not far away, saw this scene and collapsed and shouted. She didn't want her father to hurt Bruce, nor did she want Bruce to hurt her father. Ross was her last relative anyway. Looking at the aggressive Hulk. Ross also knew that he couldn't dodge at all, and he was ready to die. As a result, he suddenly looked down and saw that his waist seemed to be bound by something. Then a pulling force came, and he was instantly pulled back by an invisible force. Boom. Zhang Bai just dodged Hulk's fist. He used his telekinesis to pull Ross out from under Hulk's fist. With him were several soldiers next to him. Tony looked at Zhang Bai's attack with a surprised look on his face. No. 
Bruce, don't. Stop fighting, please. I beg you. Just when Hulk wanted to attack Ross again, Betty rushed to Ross without hesitation and shouted at Hulk with tears in her eyes. The next moment, Hulk really stopped in front of Betty, and did not attack Ross. He looked at Betty with curiosity. The anger in his heart also decreased a lot. He took a fierce look at Ross, grabbed Betty, turned around and disappeared from the academy with a few big jumps. Ross was relieved. The higher the status, the more afraid of death, and he was no exception. Mr. Zhang Bai, thank you for saving me. This is my phone number. You can call me directly if you have something. I still have to clean up this mess, so I won't talk to you anymore. At this time, Ross turned and spoke to Zhang Bai who had landed on the ground, and then wrote his phone number on a piece of paper and handed it to Zhang Bai, of course, to thank Zhang Bai for saving his life. There are many things that can be solved with his position as lieutenant general, Zhang Bai did not refuse, and nodded after taking it. Then Ross left to deal with the post-war mess, and there might be a military court waiting for him. Such a large firepower unit entered the Manhattan area. If the Hulk was caught, it might be fine, but now he has not been caught. Tony, maybe you can use your relationship to help him. What do you plan to do? At this time, Zhang Bai suddenly spoke to Tony and asked him to use his relationship to help Ross. Tony did not refuse this, but was curious about why Zhang Bai did this. Facing Tony's inquiry, he just smiled and did not answer. In the future, Ross's position in the military will be the Minister of the State Council. Compared with the current Lieutenant General, his status is naturally much higher. But there is another identity, that is, Ross may become the Red Hulk. The Red Hulk is also the Red Hulk. He has a strength of more than 100 tons, and he also has super endurance and speed. The Red Hulk has abnormally developed leg muscles, which can jump and cross long distances, run fast, and even jump to the height of orbiting the Earth. Red Hulk has strong resistance to blows and regeneration ability. His vital organs and tissues can regenerate when damaged or destroyed. He is also immune to all diseases and poisons, can survive extreme temperatures and resist nuclear explosions. But he is vulnerable to mental attacks. Unlike Hulk, the more angry the Hulk is, the stronger he is. While Red Hulk can absorb radiation energy, usually gamma ray energy, he can also absorb other types of energy, such as cosmic radiation, etc. The more energy he absorbs, the stronger he becomes. In addition to absorbing radiation, Red Hulk also continuously releases the remaining energy after the gamma energy reaction in the form of heat energy. The amount of heat will also increase with his anger, so the angrier the Red Hulk is, the higher the heat he emits. In battle, he can use this to attack with super high heat and even emit flames. According to Zhang Bai's understanding, the Red Hulk was created by Modok and Big Boss through gamma rays and cosmic radiation. Under normal circumstances, he can defeat Hulk, but when Hulk enters an angry state, his strength will continue to rise, so the Red Hulk still can't defeat Hulk. However, in a timeline in a parallel universe, the Red Hulk finally joined the Avengers and fought side by side with Hulk and others. In general, the Red Hulk is also a powerful fighting force, and he is still a sober Red Hulk. There is only Ross's personality in his body, and no Red Hulk has been derived. If Ross really becomes the Red Hulk in the future, maybe he can be invited to join the Illuminati. Zhang Bai's plan for the future of the Illuminati is not limited to the Earth. The universe is also in Zhang Bai's plan, so he will try to invite some controllable and powerful people to join the Illuminati. Let's go, let's follow and see where Hulk is. Okay. Then Zhang Bai and Tony flew into the sky and flew in the direction where Hulk left. Soon the sky changed, and soon it was covered with dark clouds and heavy rain. On the other side, Hulk grabbed Betty and came to a cave to hide from the rain. The extremely powerful Hulk actually showed fear of lightning in front of Betty. In response, Betty just coaxed Hulk as a child. As the sky darkened, Hulk and Betty fell asleep in the cave. What they didn't know was that on the mountain not far away, Tony and Zhang Bai watched all this quietly, and at this time Hulk also turned back into Bruce Banner. Let's just watch, now is a good opportunity. Let's go, let's go. Tony asked Zhang Bai impatiently. Now that Hulk has turned back into Bruce Banner, it is a good opportunity for them to invite or capture him. Zhang Bai just smiled and took Tony to the entrance of the cave, but did not do anything to Bruce Banner and Betty. 
he took out a stack of US dollars and a note from the system space and placed them next to Banner and Betty. Then he took Tony away from here, but Zhang Bai's operation made Tony very confused. However, he was not going to explain anything, and Tony did not ask again. He knew that Zhang Bai must have his reasons for doing so. The note read, Mr. Bruce Banner, the Illuminati sends you greetings. This is what you need, good luck. According to the future timeline, Banner and Betty did not give up the idea of continuing to Mr. Land's laboratory after waking up. Because she had no money, Betty sold the necklace her mother gave her, so Zhang Bai left Banner 10,000 US dollars here. At the same time, he also wanted to experiment with one thing. According to the timeline of the Hulk, he would fight with Bronsky, who would become the abomination in the future. So he was going to see if he would get the opportunity to extract the trading object after the short end of this timeline. At the beginning, the extraction opportunity was obtained after Tony announced that he was Iron Man, which was a short end of the Iron Man timeline. So he wanted to see if he would get the opportunity to extract the trading object after the end of the Hulk's timeline this time. And now Banner has not gone to Mr. Land to experiment whether he can eliminate the Hulk, even if he is invited, he may not join. So let Banner know that the Illuminati has helped him, just brush up on his good impression. The next day, Zhang Bai found that Tom and Jerry had created something that could remove toxins from the body. In order to reward them, he started a barbecue party directly in the manor, with only Zhang Bai, Martin, Wanda, Lorna, Pietro, Tom, Jerry, and a few people. Tony, come to my place for a barbecue party. Don't bring your cover models if you're excited, or I'll throw you out. Okay, you're really short-sighted, but I haven't looked for a cover model for a long time. After thinking about it, Zhang Bai called Tony to participate because he didn't have many friends, and Tony was barely one of them. Besides, the things that removed toxins from the body were originally for Tony. It was to prevent him from dying after palladium poisoning. In the timeline, he did a trick of sitting on a giant donut and eating donuts. It is worth mentioning that, like in the timeline, he gave the company to his assistant Pepper. In addition to studying and manufacturing armor at home, he was busy with the Illuminati's affairs. In the manor, Martin and Zhang Bai set up the barbecue grill and started grilling. There were all kinds of ingredients next to them. Tom and Jerry, two troublemakers, were chasing each other in the manor. As long as they didn't tear down the manor, Zhang Bai would not stop them. Wanda and Lorna used their abilities to suspend the barbecue in the air for baking. In order to achieve the purpose of training ability, Pietro was fully responsible for cleaning the ingredients and stringing various meats. Then he took out various seasonings from the villa. At this time, a Rolls Royce appeared outside the manor, which was Tony's car. After entering the manor, Tony, Pepper, and Happy got off from it. He was not surprised by the arrival of Pepper and Happy. He waved to Tony and concentrated on grilling. How is your cooking? Do you want me to help you? I tell you, I am the little prince of barbecue. No one can compare to me. You said you are the little prince of arrogance, I believe it. I guess someone who has never touched the grill said he is the little prince of barbecue. Yes, I agree with what Zhang said. Uncle Tony is arrogant as soon as he comes, I can't stand you. After Tony came to Zhang Bai and others, he spoke to Zhang Bai with a proud face. He didn't tolerate Tony's arrogance and poisonous tongue at all, and he directly hit back. Wanda and Lorna next to him even echoed Zhang Bai and started to mock Tony. Happy and Pepper were secretly surprised by the abilities of Wanda, Lorna, and Pietro. Seeing Tony being humiliated, they wanted to laugh, but at this time their attention was attracted by Tom and Jerry. They saw Tom holding a black hammer with a hundred tons written in white letters on it, and then smashed it hard at Jerry. Boom. With a loud bang, a big pit appeared in the manor, and Jerry was also flattened by the hammer. But the next second, he was intact and made faces at Tom. The hammer just now shook the whole manor. Even Zhang Bai was startled. After finding out that it was Tom who did it, he looked at Tom with a dark face. And Jerry. Realizing that he had made trouble, Tom put the hammer behind him and prepared to run away carefully. Even Jerry became restrained under Zhang Bai's gaze and pointed at Tom with his little finger. Zhang Bai smiled helplessly and said to them. Come and eat, stop making trouble. This is for you. Drink it and it can remove the palladium in your body. Are you sure? 
Isn't this just a bottle of soda? Do you want to drink it or not? If not, give it back to me. Let Tom and Jerry come to eat, turn around and put a bottle of soda in front of Tony, let him drink it, and tell him the effect. But Tony looked at Zhang Bai with a confused face. After all, a bottle of soda can remove palladium, which sounds like a fantasy. He looked at Tony unhappily and was about to take it back. Tony opened the bottle and drank it in one breath. Jin Wanji took out a palladium element tester and inserted it into his finger. Tony was in disbelief when he saw the number of 0%. Pepper looked at Zhang Bai and Tony with a puzzled look. Palladium element poisoning. Why didn't you tell me? Tony. Ahem, I just didn't tell you because I was afraid you would worry. And I can solve this problem, really, I promise. You. Faced with Pepper's questioning, Tony hurriedly explained, but still made Pepper very angry. Zhang Bai looked at Tony and Pepper meaningfully. It seemed that the two of them had already had a connection. After shaking his head, he put all the barbecued food on a plate and served it to the table next to him. Taking out a few bottles of good wine, everyone sat together to enjoy this moment of tranquility. Tom and Jerry were even more happy eating with one hand holding the barbecue and the other holding the wine. But soon they became drowsy, obviously drunk. Zhang Bai and others were eating barbecue and drinking beer in the manor. Ross was not so comfortable. After returning to the base, he was held accountable by the top leaders. Because Tony helped Ross through his connections, he was not in a military court. Bronski also broke almost all the bones in his body because of Hulk's kick. Perhaps it was because of the super serum that he recovered miraculously. Then he ran to Ross to report and wanted to continue to participate in the operation to capture Hulk. Ross also approved it directly. He still didn't give up on capturing Hulk. According to their special account that cracked Banner. They directly locked the location of Mr. Lan, and even knew his true identity. They were ready to wait for Banner to go to the other party's laboratory and then arrest him. Bruce Banner woke up in the cave and found himself holding Betty. The two soon found the $10,000 and the note next to him. The information on it made Banner very confused. He had never heard of the Illuminati organization, and the other party knew his location but did not attack him. But soon he stopped thinking about the origin of the Illuminati, and after buying a lot of things with Betty, he started to rush to the center of New York City. He still insisted on finding Mr. Lan, only he could help him return to normal. He rented a car and came to the suburbs, and soon found that the military was intercepting and checking on the road to the city. Banner's first reaction was that the military was looking for him. So he could only enter the city center through a hidden road. Then he rushed to the location of Mr. Land's laboratory. Xavier Academy for Gifted Youth. Two mechanical figures fell from the sky, and many mutants in the academy looked at this figure with excitement. The visitors were really Tony and Zhang Bai, who came to invite Professor X to join the Illuminati. Because of their identities, many mutants admired them very much. Soon Professor X, Scott and others came out of the office, and seeing the arrival of Tony and Zhang Bai, Scott and others looked very unfriendly. Professor X didn't react much, and looked very calm, and then Zhang Bai walked out of the armor directly. Professor Charles, Tony and I have something to discuss with you. Is it convenient for us to talk alone? No, Professor. They must have other conspiracies. Okay, Scott. Come to my office. Zhang Bai who came out of the armor, invited Charles, and before Charles could answer. Scott next to him spoke first, thinking that they would be bad for the professor. However, Charles interrupted Scott and asked Tony and Zhang Bai to go to his office to talk. Then the two of them entered Charles's office, and Zhang Bai's armor was controlled by the intelligence system and followed him. After entering the office, Zhang Bai directly used his psychic ability and magnetic control to block the entire room to prevent anyone from eavesdropping outside. Phoenix girl. Jean has psychic abilities. Psychic ability. I didn't expect Mr. Zhang Bai to succeed in his research. No, I just gained the ability within the gene. I don't have mutant genes in my body. We are here to invite you to join the Illuminati, Tony. Feeling the familiar psychic ability, Charles was very surprised to speak to Zhang Bai. He thought Zhang Bai had already studied the secret of mutant genes and even used it on himself. Zhang Bai just shook his head slightly and denied that he had studied mutant genes. 
and told him that he only gained the ability within the gene and did not have mutant genes in his body. Then he told the purpose of this trip, turned his head and looked at Tony, ready to let him introduce it to Charles. However, Zhang Bai was still quite sure about inviting Charles. Yes, we are here to invite you to join the Illuminati. The Illuminati is an organization formed by Zhang Bai and I to protect the Earth. I think you should also know those huge monsters. In order to prevent the Earth from being destroyed in the future, we formed this team to protect the Earth and mankind. It is equivalent to a superhero organization. Now our members are me, Zhang Bai, Sentinel, Zhao Helen. Bruce Banner in the future is also on our invitation list, and we have already started to contact him. There is also Reed Richards, a top scientist. Compared with me, he is a little bit behind. What can I get by joining? The situation of mutants is not good now. I still need to take care of mutants. I can't shoulder the responsibility of protecting the Earth and mankind. Joining the Illuminati will change the status and situation of mutants in a short time. Isn't a superhero a good gimmick? As long as ordinary people know that mutants are also one of them, they are still superheroes who protect the earth and mankind. Hero, your situation will naturally change. Quote. If you say so, I can turn my students into superheroes myself, so why should I join the Illuminati? Will the government let you create superheroes? Will those congressmen be willing? Tony immediately told Charles about the Illuminati's philosophy and the current members. He invited him to join again. When Charles heard that the Sentinel also joined the Illuminati, a trace of shock flashed in his eyes. His psychic ability allowed him to know a lot of things. Including the Sentinel's affairs. However, he asked Tony a question. What can he get by joining the Illuminati? He can't just let him join with passion and big cakes. Tony expressed his thoughts on this. That is to change the status of mutants in America and the world. The method Tony said did not impress Charles. After all, if he wanted, he could do it with this method. At this time, Zhang Bai said something that silenced Charles. The American government will never let mutants humans become superheroes, and mutants have all kinds of abilities, which may threaten the government's dominance. Therefore, the American government cannot allow mutants to become superheroes. Once mutants become superheroes, their influence will increase, and then they will become uncontrollable. In addition, mutants generally have higher learning ability and IQ than ordinary people. If mutants are allowed to become superheroes, ordinary people will no longer reject mutants through influence. Then mutants are likely to enter various industries through their strong learning ability and IQ, and even government departments may be infiltrated. At that time, the threat to the American government will be fatal. Charles fell silent. He naturally knew this problem and understood the government's high-level rejection of mutants. Okay, I'll join, but you must help the mutants change their current situation. Of course, in fact, every human has mutant genes in their body, but they are in a dormant state. A few humans have activated mutant genes, which will give them superpowers. And become mutants. In the end, Professor X agreed to join the Illuminati, but he required that the current situation of mutants must be changed. Zhang Bai and Tony naturally had no objection to this. Zhang Bai explained the mutant genes to the two of them lightly, and even said that all humans have mutant genes. He knew the true origin of mutants. The X gene in mutants came from the influence of the cosmic gods who came to the earth in ancient times on the early humans on the earth. This influence naturally cannot be just a part, all humans are affected. With the development of the times, all humans have hidden mutant genes in their bodies, but they are not activated. So he did not awaken his own superpowers. Tony and Charles were very surprised by Zhang Bai's remarks, but it is indeed possible. Every mutant is awakened from an ordinary person. The base of the Illuminati is under several farms in the suburbs of New York. If there is a special situation, we will contact you. At the same time, it will take some time to solve the situation of mutants. There is no way to solve this situation now. Okay. Just notify me if you need it. After talking to Charles, Tony and Zhang Bai activated their armor and left Xavier Academy for gifted youth. After they left, Scott and others looked at Charles. Very curious about what the three talked about in the office. They came to invite me to join the Illuminati. The Illuminati was formed by the two of them to protect the Earth and humans. Even the man who repelled monsters everywhere in New York has joined. 
for the mutants to get a better situation, I agreed. Scott, you need to change your temper. This world is not as simple as we think. Zhang Bai has shown two abilities just now, one is my psychic ability, and the other is Magneto's ability. As for how many abilities he has, I am not sure. But this Illuminati organization will definitely be very powerful in the future. So you can't always act on impulse. The Illuminati has Tony Stark to provide funds, and there is also that powerful existence. In addition, Zhang Bai, who I have never been able to see through, I couldn't invade his mind through psychic ability from the beginning. There is a great hope to change the situation of our mutants through the Illuminati. I know, Professor. I won't continue to be impulsive in the future. Looking at the curious eyes of the crowd, Charles calmly told everyone about the other party's invitation to him, and told Scott not to be impulsive. Then he told everyone about the ability Zhang Bai showed. Everyone instantly thought of the original compensation, which was the genes of everyone in the academy. Now the other party has actually obtained the abilities of the professor and Magneto. Charles even told everyone about the Sentinels joining the Illuminati. Scott was silent after listening to the professor's words. After careful consideration, he promised Charles that he would not be impulsive again. Scott was originally a rational and steady, firm and gentle person with a long-term vision. The reason why he had a conflict with Zhang Bai. It was because he had seen his compatriots being subjected to various cruel experiments in the laboratory before, and he had been holding back his anger. For the sake of the overall situation, he would not conflict with Zhang Bai. After hearing Scott's words, Charles smiled with relief. On the other side, Banner and Betty had already arrived at the university where Mr. Land's laboratory was located. They walked to the floor of the laboratory through the sign, but soon met Mr. Lan himself. That is Samuel Stern. Hey, Mr. Samuel. You must be Mr. Blue. I'm Mr. Green. Wow, Mr. Green. I didn't expect you to come so quickly. Let's go to my lab and chat. Banner stopped Samuel and told him his identity. Samuel's eyes lit up when he heard that Banner in front of him was Mr. Green. He took Banner and Betty to his lab ready to help Banner recover his original appearance. But he also had a lot of plans in his mind. Soon, after entering the lab, Banner handed his previous experimental data to Samuel. Then Samuel prepared the serum and let Banner lie on the experimental bed, ready to inject the serum for him and eliminate the Hulk in his body. Okay, here I come. It will definitely succeed, be ready. Samuel took two electric shock pads and rubbed them twice, and came to Banner's head. He pretended to be relaxed and spoke to Banner. He was naturally very excited. Banner was now a valuable person in his eyes, a research project with extremely high value. When Banner was not paying attention, two electric shock pads were attached to Banner's temple, and the next moment Banner began to twitch. Betty, who was next to him, looked at this scene with a worried look on her face, praying that Banner could return to normal. But Betty is not simple either, she can become a female red giant. Red She-Hulk has superhuman strength, endurance and durability. Her skin can withstand great pressure and temperature, and falling from a height, artillery bombardment and powerful energy explosions cannot cause any damage to her. She can also create shock waves by clapping her palms. Red She-Hulk can also enhance her abilities by absorbing energy such as nuclear radiation and cosmic energy, and she can also release energy through touch. Red She-Hulk also has a strong regenerative ability, and she can quickly recover from almost all injuries. Even if she is on the verge of death in human form, as long as she transforms, she can regenerate and heal the injuries she has suffered. But she cannot regenerate limbs or important organs. Red She-Hulk's efficient metabolism also makes her immune to all drugs, poisons and known diseases. When Betty Ross becomes a harpy, she has superhuman strength and endurance that can rival the Hulk. She also has extremely sharp claws that can easily break metal. She can also use her wings to fly quickly, and can fire powerful energy shockwaves from her hands, which are powerful enough to hurt the Hulk. Under Samuel's stimulation, Banner's body began to change rapidly, his skin began to turn green, his body began to swell, and his shoes burst directly. Samuel watched this scene in surprise and enthusiasm, and then came to the computer next to him to enter the instructions for injecting serum. The serum quickly entered the Hulk's body through the syringe, 
killing a large number of gamma factors, and the hulk gradually turned into Banner's appearance. Thank you Akainu for sending the urging talisman. Thank you very much. Thank you Boring 30 years for sending the milk tea. Thank you very much. Betty was delighted to see Banner return to normal, and she was even happier for Banner. Soon, as Banner recovered, he got up from the experimental bed and was very surprised to see himself recover. I'm finally recovered. Thank you, Mr. Lan. Maybe I should call you Mr. Samuel. It's okay, as long as you recover. By the way, I have some good results to show you. Banner got down from the experimental bed, hugged Betty for a while, and then thanked Samuel. Samuel smiled and said don't worry, then took Banner and Betty to another room, which was full of cryogenic boxes, and all the blood in the cryogenic boxes was Banner's blood. This is all my blood. How did you get so much? Yes, these are all cultivated by me using blood factors. You know, your cells are very active. If we study them, all diseases can be cured and the Nobel Prize can be won. There are also countless wealth, you know, Bruce. No, I don't agree. This blood must be destroyed immediately. You don't know how terrible my blood will cause. Destroy it immediately. This. Okay, okay. Looking at the blood that filled nearly a room, Banner asked Samuel with a puzzled look. After hearing Banner's question, Samuel explained to him excitedly, and even said that as long as these cells were successfully studied, they could even get the Nobel Prize, and there would be countless wealth. But Banner seriously refused and said that all the blood must be destroyed, and he was crazy in his heart. He didn't know how terrible his blood was. If it was obtained by the military or some terrorist organizations, it would cause serious consequences. If they used their own blood for human experiments, they might create a monster like Hulk. He couldn't imagine how big a disaster would happen at that time. After hearing what Banner said, Samuel had no choice but to agree. But what they didn't know was that Samuel helped Banner remove the Hulk from his body. The military had already discovered their traces, and many military jeeps had already arrived at the university. Soldiers in camouflage uniforms entered the building with various tranquilizer guns and anesthetic gases. Bang! The next second, an anesthetic gas was thrown into the laboratory, and then the soldiers holding tranquilizer guns rushed into the laboratory, aiming at Banner and started shooting. The anesthetic needle hit Banner's body, and he fainted after a while. The soldiers who completed the task immediately grabbed Banner and walked down. Betty could only follow up, but Samuel raised his hands and looked at these soldiers in horror. The female officer who used to be with Ross came to Samuel and asked him to tell him why Banner came here. Looking at the dark muzzle in front of him. Samuel did not hide it, and told her directly that he helped Banner eliminate the gamma factor in his body. At this time, Bronsky rushed into the laboratory with a rifle. The female officer looked at him with great confusion, but Bronsky attacked her directly. Gotta. After a shoulder throw, he broke the female officer's neck. Seeing this, Samuel was even more terrified and looked at Bronsky without daring to move. I want to become as powerful as the Hulk. Can you do it? If not, you will die. Yes, yes, I can help you. But there are side effects. Don't worry, help me become a powerful creature like the Hulk. Bronsky grabbed Samuel's collar with a ferocious face and spoke to him viciously. Since he was almost kicked to death by the Hulk last time, Bronsky knew that he wanted to be stronger than the Hulk. Only by injecting a more terrifying serum and changing his body shape to the same as the Hulk can he fight him. When he learned that the Hulk's blood would mutate people, he began to have ideas in his mind. He was fanatical and didn't care about the side effects that Samuel said, and asked Samuel to inject him with the Hulk's blood immediately. There was no other choice, so Samuel had to start injecting Bronsky with Hulk's blood. Bronsky, who was lying on the experimental bed, was inserted with various needles by Samuel, and then connected to the position of the syringe. The computer was controlled to start injecting Hulk's blood into Bronsky. As two large cans of Hulk's blood were injected into Bronsky's body, green lines began to appear on his skin. Soon, Bronsky's body began to change, his hair began to fall off, and his skin turned green. Clothes, pants, and shoes began to break due to the expansion of his body. Soon Bronsky turned into a monster much larger than the Hulk. That is abomination. Gamma ray radiation changes the abomination transformed Bronsky's body, strengthening his cellular structure and, 
from some as yet undiscovered source, adding over 800 pounds of bone marrow and tissue to his body. Unlike the Hulk, the Abomination's transformation is stable, but Bronski cannot change back and forth between his human and his monster state. Super Strength The Abomination possesses great strength, allowing him to surpass the 100 level. The Abomination's strength exceeds that of certain incarnations of the Hulk, such as Mr. Joey Fit level 70, or the Savage Hulk, level 90. The Abomination's strength does not fluctuate like the Hulk's. As a result, the Abomination can be stronger than the normally calm Hulk, though the Hulk's strength increases when he is angry. The Abomination can jump up to 2 kilometers, and his skin can withstand small firearms. Unlike the Hulk, the Abomination's strength cannot grow with anger. While unable to revert to human form, he retains all of Bronski's personality and intelligence. Appearance. The Abomination is stronger than the Hulk, and is covered in reptilian scales. Super Endurance. The Abomination's advanced muscle tissue produces far less fatigue toxins during physical activity than an average human's muscle tissue. It is able to reach maximum capacity for several days before the fatigue toxins in his blood begin to consume it. Super Resistance. In addition to his great strength, the Abomination's body tissue is harder and more resistant to damage than that of an average human. The Abomination's skin can withstand extreme heat, blistering, and freezing, and his body can withstand great impact forces, such as artillery shells and powerful energy blasts, without being harmed. I'll help you change back right away. Believe me, I said there would be side effects. No. I don't want to, I feel a strong force. Ha 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 ha. I like this body. Bang. Samuel looked at the abomination and said to him in fear, but Bronski did not want to change back to his original appearance, his eyes were full of excitement. Because he could feel that he was full of power now, making him eager to fight with Hulk. After throwing Samuel away, Bronski broke through the window and rushed out. Samuel, who was thrown away by Bronski, had his forehead broken after hitting the machine. At this time, Banner's blood above had flowed out of the container and just dripped onto the wound on Samuel's forehead. Then his head began to change, and Samuel, who felt his change, showed a weird smile. Since then, the big boss was born. Because of the infection of Banner's blood, his intelligence has increased 1,000 times compared to before, with an insatiable desire for knowledge, telepathy and super willpower. The big boss has intelligence beyond ordinary people. He has strong intuition, computational thinking, information storage, logic and philosophical structure. His intelligence is said to have almost unlimited potential. Theoretically, he is capable of acquiring knowledge and understanding beyond the normal human mind, he is capable of mastering every specialized subject in the world, and is able to fully accept concepts outside of his environment. His brain has been enhanced to the point where his intuition is almost always correct. Big Boss has a perfect memory, and he is able to recall every moment of the incident. One Telepathy. In addition to his extraordinary intelligence, Big Boss has some psychic powers that allow him to mentally control certain people, as long as they are weak-willed. Mind Control. Willpower, among other mind control abilities. Gamma Ray Projection. After becoming Red Big Boss, Big Boss is able to emit gamma rays at will. He actually already has this power after becoming the green big boss he first became, but he has not yet been observed. These are all future big boss abilities, but the increase in intelligence and thinking speed is real. In the timeline, big boss's intelligence will increase as his head gets bigger. After Samuel came to his senses, he immediately began to pack his things, picked up a white box with a lot of banners blood and some information, and hurriedly left the laboratory. He was naturally unwilling to be ordinary after improving his intelligence, and he was doing some meaningless experiments in this laboratory without resources. After the abomination rushed out of the laboratory, he came to the street next to the university. The military soldiers who had not yet evacuated soon discovered the appearance of the abomination, and they thought it was Hulk and began to attack the abomination. Bullets were free and began to shoot at the abomination. Like Hulk, these bullets had no effect on the abomination. The abomination excitedly began to destroy everything around him. The car was like a toy in his hands. He grabbed a car and threw it at the soldiers who attacked him. Boom. In the next second, many soldiers were smashed into meat patties. This was still a busy street. Ordinary people around saw the abomination running outside frantically. 
but there were also many ordinary people who were affected and hammered to death by the abomination. The excited abomination jumped to the front of the jeep. He clenched his fists and smashed the front of the car hard. The entire front of the car was flattened by the huge force of the abomination. Because of the huge force, the rear of the car even lifted up directly, but the soldiers on it continued to attack the abomination without fear of death. The next second, they were caught in the hands of the abomination and squeezed hard. The two soldiers were directly squeezed to death by the abomination, and all the bones in their waists were crushed. At this time, the video on a jeep controlled the machine gun to continuously attack the abomination, and reported the situation here to General Ross while attacking the abomination. General, Hulk was found on 121st Street, running north to Broadway, and needs support. What? Are you sure, soldier? Yes, general. He has rushed over. Ross on the transport plane was confused after receiving the soldier's report, because Bruce Banner, also known as Hulk, was next to him. He was still in a coma. After confirming with the soldier again, Ross connected to the video screen. As a result, a monster similar to the Hulk was seen wreaking havoc on the street. Soon, it rushed to the soldier connected to the camera screen and easily solved the video. The video in the transport plane was also cut off. After learning that there was another such monster, Ross was in a very complicated mood. The previous Hulk had already made him very difficult, and now there was another one similar to the Hulk. This is simply nonsense. At this time, Banner slowly opened his eyes, and Betty immediately helped him up. Let me go, only I can deal with him. No, you can't transform into Hulk now, you will die. No, Betty, I can feel it, it's still there. Now if I don't stop him, more people will die because of him, and he should be made of my blood. Turn back. Yes, General. Quote. Banner sat up with difficulty and spoke to Ross, but Betty next to him immediately objected. Banner had eliminated Hulk in the laboratory just now. Now he would be a suicide if he went down, but Banner told Betty helplessly that he could still feel Hulk's presence. That is to say, Hulk was not eliminated just now. Now only he can stop him. Later, the whole street will be destroyed by him, and a large number of ordinary people will be affected. The monster seen in the video just now. Banner already had some guesses in his mind. There was still a lot of his blood in the laboratory just now. This monster should be made of his blood. Ross looked at Banner in silence for a while and asked the driver to turn back. Now he had no better way. Banner could only try. The driver who received Ross's order began to turn back. Hulk. Come out. Where are you? Come out quickly. Quote. After destroying all the military vehicles, the abomination began to wreak havoc. The surrounding shops, street lights, and vehicles were all his targets. He even threw the vehicles as if they were rocks at the buildings on both sides. Many vehicles were directly stuck on the walls. While destroying, the abomination screamed at the Hulk. He couldn't wait to fight with the Hulk and let the Hulk know that he was the most powerful. Soon, the large helicopter transport that Ross and others were riding in soon arrived above the abomination. Betty looked at Banner with a worried look on her face. Banner shook his head and jumped directly from the hatch. Have you found out who the monster is? General, it's Lieutenant Colonel Bronsky. What? It's this guy. Notify Tony Stark and Jong by horse to come over and ask them in my name. Yes, General. After Banner jumped down, Ross asked the soldier next to him. After learning that it was Bronsky, Ross's face was very ugly. He didn't expect Bronsky to be so bold that he secretly injected Banner's blood to become like this, and also wantonly destroyed everything around him. After thinking for a while, Ross asked the soldiers to notify Tony and Zhang Bai to come over, and even directly asked the other party in his own name. Obviously, he was ready to use his favor to exchange for the other party's action, although he could mobilize more weapons and shells, even more powerful weapons. But this is the city, and it's Manhattan. If a large number of armed helicopters and tanks are mobilized again, his lieutenant general's hat will definitely be taken off. So he can only find a superhero to solve it. Tony Stark's words made him confident that he could make the other party take action. Iron Man is still a superhero in name, and he will not ignore this matter, but Zhang Bai is hard to say. He once publicly stated that he is not a superhero, and he shot and killed a congressman in public, and his strength seems to be stronger than Tony Stark's. Tony, 
who soon learned of the situation, immediately contacted Zhang Bai, and the two put on their armor and flew directly to the location of the abomination. After Banner jumped off the helicopter transport plane, he instantly smashed a big hole on the ground, which attracted the attention of the abomination. The next moment, a thick green finger appeared next to the big hole, and then Hulk jumped out of the big hole. From his eyes, it can be seen that he is a little out of shape now, obviously because the serum injected before is still affecting him. Hulk, you are here. Ha 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 ha. Roar. The abomination was very excited to see Hulk appear, and then he began to rush to Hulk's position. Hulk roared and began to run in the direction of the abomination, and then the two jumped at the same time. Two huge fists collided with each other. The result was that abomination was indeed better. Hulk was directly punched away by Abomination. Abomination would not miss this opportunity to beat the down dog. He picked up a car next to him and threw it at Hulk. Hulk came to his senses and caught the car thrown by Abomination. Before he could throw the car away, Abomination directly pressed on the car, and with the weight of Abomination. Hulk was directly pressed under the car. At this time, Tony and Zhang Bai had also arrived at the battlefield. The two stood on the roof of a tall building and watched the scene in front of them. Wait, Hulk is not as weak as you think, let them fight first. Seeing Hulk fall into a disadvantage, Tony was about to attack Abomination, but was stopped by Zhang Bai. He calmly watched the scene of Abomination pressing Hulk in front of him. He explained to Tony lightly. After hearing Zhang Bai's explanation, Tony was very interested in seeing how powerful Hulk was. Roar. The suppressed Hulk roared, and his strength began to surge. At this time, he had returned to the normal form of the Hulk without Banner's injection of serum. He found the right opportunity to lift the car and the Abomination on top of him. Then he began to attack the Abomination, but even so, he was still no match for the Abomination. Bronsky, the predecessor of the Abomination, was an ace special forces soldier. Even after transforming into the Abomination, his fighting skills were not comparable to the Hulk. In addition, the Hulk's strength was not enough to fully suppress the Abomination, so he was still hung up and beaten by the Abomination. A set of military boxing made the Hulk's anger surge, and the helicopter hovering in the sky began to attack the Abomination at this time. In order to help the Hulk relieve the pressure, the Abomination noticed Ross in the helicopter. The Abomination jumped towards the helicopter with hatred in his eyes, but was knocked down by the Hulk in the air, and a high-rise building next to it was directly knocked out of the middle by the two people. The stopped Abomination continued to attack Hulk, and a big pit soon appeared on the ground again. Hulk's body began to swell at this time. His physique, strength, and speed were all improved. Then he punched Abomination away, but the Abomination was fine. He started running towards Hulk's position, his speed kept increasing, and he used the impact force to knock Hulk away, and then he jumped and stepped hard on Hulk. Zhang Bai looked at this scene and doubted his life a little, although Hulk was also beaten by Abomination in the timeline. That was also because Banner injected the serum, which caused Hulk's strength to be offline, but with the increase of anger, Hulk's strength was also gradually increasing. Why is he still being beaten by the Abomination? Zhang Bai soon guessed. Hulk is just a child who was born not long ago. His fighting style is relatively primitive. He has not received systematic training and does not know some energy-saving techniques for attacking moves. He only knows to use his fists and his own strength to smash. The predecessor of the Abomination was an ace special forces soldier, equivalent to the existence of a soldier king. Even if Hulk's strength surpasses him by a lot, he can suppress Hulk through fighting skills and some special methods, just like using impact force to knock Hulk away just now. In this case, dodging is naturally the best choice, but Hulk is now holding on, and then he is knocked away by the Abomination. This is also the reason why the Abomination can suppress the Hulk, but Zhang Bai does not think that the Hulk will lose the outcome of the battle. Now seeing that Hulk has been beaten all the time, when his anger rises again, his strength will increase again. Even if the Abomination can crush the Hulk through fighting skills, when his strength far exceeds that of the Abomination, he can only be suppressed and beaten. In Zhang Bai's memory, the Abomination didn't seem to die in the end, and he lived until Tony snapped his fingers in the timeline. Later, his size would become very large, and he could switch between human form and Abomination form. He even fought with Banner who had merged with the Hulk's body.
The huge abomination looked at Banner who had merged with the Hulk's body as if he was looking at a child, and suppressed Banner with one hand. The disappearance of the Hulk also made Banner lose the ability to grow infinitely. After becoming a green doctor, his combat power was even more weak. While Zhang Bai was thinking, Hulk was chased by the abomination everywhere, and even climbed directly onto a building to escape by jumping, and the abomination was chasing him from behind. Ross even commanded the helicopter to use a heavy machine gun to attack the Abomination. This also attracted the attention of Abomination again. He jumped and grabbed the parking lever under the helicopter. He pulled the entire helicopter to the ground fiercely. The helicopter pilot was also pushing the joystick hard to pull the helicopter higher. Hulk saw this situation. He immediately jumped behind Abomination and swung his fist to attack Abomination's head. Finally, Abomination let go of the helicopter and fought with Hulk. But the helicopter had lost its balance and began to sway in the air. Seeing this, Tony activated the flight mode and rushed towards the direction of the helicopter. Zhang Bai followed slowly behind. Tony came to the bottom of the helicopter and used the propulsion of the armor to help the helicopter keep its balance. Zhang Bai also took action directly. The magnetic force and telekinesis enveloped the entire helicopter. With Zhang Bai's control, it soon became balanced. Boom. On the other side, the battle between Hulk and Abomination has entered a white-hot stage. Abomination still has the upper hand, and he uses a thick iron chain to tightly wrap around Hulk's neck. He grabs both ends with both hands and uses all his strength to strangle Hulk to death. But the next second, green lines began to appear in Hulk's eyes, and his body swelled again. He grabbed the iron chain with both hands and pulled it hard, and Abomination was thrown out by Hulk. Hulk began to attack Abomination with a thick iron chain in the face of absolute power. All the skills seemed particularly powerless, and the situation on the battlefield began to reverse. Hulk began to suppress Abomination. The sense of hitting the flesh with every punch made Zhang Bai very satisfied. This is the real aesthetics of power. Boom. Under Hulk's fierce attack, Abomination was beaten without the power to fight back, and a big pit appeared on the ground. Then Hulk used an iron chain to wrap around Abomination's neck. Treat Abomination the way Abomination treated him just now, and Hulk didn't stop until Abomination finally collapsed on the ground with all his strength. He stood up and looked at everything around him. Just when Hulk was about to run away, a needle shot out from nowhere. It pierced Hulk's body, and actually penetrated Hulk's skin and entered his body. As the liquid in the needle was injected into Hulk's body, Hulk's eyes began to turn red, and his body swelled up without being angry. Even his momentum was rising, which made Zhang Bai secretly think that it was not good. Now Hulk seemed to be out of control because of the liquid just injected. Tony, Hulk seems to be out of control, you get ready. There is something wrong with that thing just now. I know. Shit, who is doing this in secret? Roar. Hulk's size doubled, and with a roar, all the glass around him was shattered, and ordinary people not far away covered their ears and wailed. Looking at their appearance, Zhang Bai was speechless. How fearless are these Americans? Hulk and the powerful existence of Abomination are fighting, and they dare to come around to watch. This made Zhang Bai speechless and he also had a deeper understanding of America's suicidal behavior. Ross on the helicopter asked the pilot to stay away after noticing something was wrong. Boom. Hulk's eyes glowed red and he jumped towards Tony. After Tony dodged flexibly, Hulk smashed directly on a tall building. The tall building could not withstand Hulk's power and began to tilt, but fortunately it did not collapse. After seeing Hulk attacking Tony, Zhang Bai knew that Hulk was out of control now. If he was not stopped, this area would be destroyed by him. These made Zhang Bai a little embarrassed. Even if he and Tony could not beat Hulk in normal state, Hulk's state was not ordinary now. With such a huge body, he didn't know how much strength he had reached. One punch could directly beat him and Tony into meat patties. He even had the idea of calling the Sentinel to deal with the other party, but at this moment Tony was already dealing with the rampaging Hulk. Every time was very thrilling. Seeing Tony's appearance, it was obvious that he would not leave. There was no way, Zhang Bai had to take action. But he didn't plan to wear the armor. Although the magnetic armor can enhance his ability to control magnetism, it is not conducive to his releasing other abilities. Boom. 
Zhang Bai took off his armor in the air and stood in the air relying on Storm's ability to control lightning and create tornadoes. Dark clouds began to appear in the sky, and soon there were lightning and thunder. Tony was still dealing with Hulk at this moment. In S.H.I.E.L.D., Nick Fury looked at the video with a serious face. He didn't expect Hulk to be so strong. Now his body is swelled again, and it seems to be out of control. The other is Zhang Bai's ability. A person without mutant memories has the ability of mutants. The ability displayed by Zhang Bai now is not difficult to recognize. Storm it was so recognizable when controlling lightning. Because there were many people live broadcasting, the images of Zhang Bai and others were all broadcast live, and not just one organization was paying attention to this. Shield, Red House, Monarch, SWORD, SWORD, Inhumans, Osborne Enterprises, Knock Corporation, etc. Among them, it was Knock Biotech that injected the unknown liquid into Hulk just now. The liquid injected into Hulk's body was a strengthening agent mixed with Abaddon's genetic serum and Blood Orchid. Blood Orchid, according to legend, is an unexploited wilderness in the deepest part of the jungle of Borneo. The dangerous geographical environment has become a natural protective barrier for various rare animals and plants. Blood orchid, grows here. It is an extremely rare red orchid. The serous fluid it secretes can prolong the life of cells and has the effect of, eternal youth. It is the fountain of youth in the medical field and has the reputation of, a mortal flower. Animals that eat it will produce genetic mutations, causing many animals to grow huge, and the blood orchid is now also guarded by a group of huge pythons. The drug developed by combining monster genes obviously uses Hulk as the first test subject. Snap. But Zhang Bai didn't know this. He was suspended in the air and kept controlling lightning to attack Hulk, which made Hulk turn his target to Zhang Bai. When Hulk jumped up, Zhang Bai directly created a tornado to attack Hulk, and Hulk was instantly caught in it. It started to rotate non-stop. Zhang Bai and Tony would naturally not miss such an opportunity. Tony kept attacking Hulk who was bound by the tornado, and various weapons were released. Zhang Bai controlled the flames on the ground to be caught in the tornado. The next moment, the tornado turned into a fire tornado, but these attacks could not cause any damage to Hulk. Soon, Hulk broke free from the tornado, his legs slightly bent, and the whole person rushed towards Zhang Bai's position like a huge cannonball. Zhang Bai changed his position instantly, and Hulk crashed directly into the middle of the high-rise building behind him, knocking the entire high-rise building through. Zhang, what should we do? Our attacks can't cause any damage to it. Can your psychic ability wake him up? No, his mind is very confused, and psychic ability can't invade his mind at all. Tony said to Zhang Bai with a trembling voice. The current Hulk is too terrifying, and he and Zhang Bai can't do anything about him. Then he suggested that Zhang Bai use psychic ability. He shook his head at Tony's suggestion and said it wouldn't work at all. Even if Professor X brought a brain amplifier, it would probably not be able to invade Hulk's mind. At this time, Zhang Bai found that no one came after fighting with Tony for a long time, and he didn't even see a shield agent. Instantly he understood that Nick Fury wanted him and Tony to work. Collect the combat data of the two and analyze their strength. This made Zhang Bai furious, and then the magnetic armor came to Zhang Bai. After Zhang Bai put it on, he used magnetic force to pull Tony up directly, and stopped after rising nearly 300 meters. Shit, what are you doing? Aren't we going to fight? We've been fighting for a long time, and did you see anyone come to help? No shield agent showed up. They obviously want us to work, and get our combat data in the battle with Hulk, so as to analyze our strength. If you want to go up, go down by yourself. Well, let Hulk dismantle it. Anyway, everyone around has run away, and there are only a few guys who are not afraid of death. Tony, who is pulled to the sky by Zhang Bai's magnetic control, spoke to Zhang Bai with a confused face. In response, Zhang Bai told Tony what he had observed and loosened his restraints, asking him to go down and fight Hulk if he wanted to, because he didn't want to work for others. After hearing what Zhang Bai said, I realized that from the time Hulk and Abomination appeared until now, only the two of them were fighting, and even Ross ran away. No shield agent was seen, and then Tony didn't plan to go down, anyway, the people around him had already run away during the battle just now. 
Only a few guys who were not afraid of death were still broadcasting live, and Tony didn't care if they were looking for death. Zhang Bai and Tony's sudden departure made the guys who were broadcasting live look confused. Even the people in the live broadcast room were the same. After Hulk didn't find his target of attack, he began to destroy all the buildings around him wantonly. Nick Fury watched Tony and Zhang Bai floating in the sky through the satellite without any intention of continuing to fight. This made his face darker, and he was indeed the same as Zhang Bai guessed. Neither Tony nor Zhang Bai joined his plan, and they were both members of the unstable list. For this reason, he planned to collect data on Tony and Zhang Bai through this battle. And find a way to restrain them through these data. But he didn't expect that the two of them would stop fighting directly, and just float in the air and look down. Now he could only dispatch the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If he didn't send S.H.I.E.L.D. out now, the International Security Council would tear him apart. Originally, this was S.H.I.E.L.D.'s job. With the actions of S.H.I.E.L.D. Soon, agents holding energy weapons appeared on the battlefield, and even Hawkeye and Black Widow came to the scene on Quint's fighters. Tony and Zhang Bai watched this scene quietly in the air. After these agents appeared, both of them sneered, but the next moment Zhang Bai's expression became serious, because a person walked out of the Quint's fighter. A person who looked very unreliable, but his speed made Zhang Bai's eyes unable to react. Boom. In an instant, Hulk was blown away by the black man, even if Hulk stood up and attacked him. The black man could also take Hulk's attack. He kicked Hulk out again with one foot, and appeared in front of Hulk the next second. He raised his fist and smashed it hard on Hulk's head. While he was attacking Hulk, a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent came to Hulk with a large can of special anesthetic. The needle was inserted into Hulk's body. With the injection of the special anesthetic, Hulk gradually lost his will. After a while, he lay on the ground unconscious and gradually turned back into Banner. Tony and Zhang Bai in the air were very surprised to see this scene in front of them. It was mainly because of the strength of the black man that he could suppress Hulk in this state. Zhang Bai looked at the slightly familiar face and suddenly remembered something. The other party seemed to be Hancock. A powerful human with superhuman strength can be similar to it flies in a biological stance, has great strength, and its body can withstand shells. Compared with the Superman of DC next door, it is slightly inferior, but it is still powerful on Earth. The other party came down from the Quince Fighter of S.H.I.E.L.D., wearing the same combat suit as Hawkeye and Natasha. It is obvious that he has joined S.H.I.E.L.D., which surprised Zhang Bai. He didn't expect that he underestimated the strength of S.H.I.E.L.D. However, since Hancock exists, does that superwoman also exist? That is, the superwoman named Mary, her strength is not much weaker than Hancock, but I don't know if she has become the wife of the public relations now. That superwoman is top-notch in both figure and appearance. If the other party is still single, Zhang Bai doesn't mind having something with her. Whether it is the other party's powerful strength or beautiful face and romantic figure, it is worth a try. Because of the existence of Hancock, Zhang Bai and Tony can only let S.H.I.E.L.D. take Banner away. The two of them had come to nothing, but now Tony's face was also very solemn, obviously shocked by the strength of S.H.I.E.L.D. The black man should be called Hancock. His strength is not as good as the Sentinel. He is just a low-profile Superman, with only flying, super physique, and super strength. It's a pity that S.H.I.E.L.D. is ahead, otherwise if he joins our Illuminati, it can enhance the strength of the Illuminati. In fact, it may not be impossible. When something happens to S.H.I.E.L.D., we can invite him to join. Although he is a little unreliable, he can usually replace the Sentinel. What happened to S.H.I.E.L.D.? When? At this time, Zhang Bai spoke to Tony, told him Hancock's ability, and said that there might be a chance to invite him to join the Illuminati in the future. Zhang Bai did not intend to tell Tony that after S.H.I.E.L.D. launched the Insight Project in the future, Pierce sent agents to raid Nick Fury on the street in order to prevent Nick Fury from blocking the launch of the aerospace carrier. This made Nick Fury know the reason why there were a large number of Hydra members in S.H.I.E.L.D. Later, he cooperated with Captain America and others to destroy S.H.I.E.L.D., and later triggered a civil war. He was waiting to use this news to trip up S.H.I.E.L.D., which is why he said that Hancock might also join the Illuminati in the future. Hancock is different from others. He has no agent or organizational will at all. He is free to be a superhero in the timeline. The damage and loss caused by saving people are huge. He is also the first superhero to voluntarily enter the prison.
Later, under the guidance of public relations, he really became a superhero, judging from the other party's state just now. Maybe it was just because S.H.I.E.L.D. promised him something that made Hancock join S.H.I.E.L.D. And the time he joined won't be too long, otherwise the last time he made a move was not the Sentinel, but Hancock. Hancock's ability is also fixed. He doesn't have the growth ability like Krypton Superman, nor does he have the weakness of Kryptonite. Facing ordinary Titan monsters, it should be 50 to 50. It's a bit hard to say about Godzilla and King Kong. After all, Godzilla has various forms and his strength is constantly getting stronger. King Kong also has a powerful axe in his ancestral land in the inner world. So in general, Hancock's growth has been fixed, unless there is any special opportunity. For example, the Infinity Stones or something, it is possible to improve his strength. Now Bruce Banner has been taken away by S.H.I.E.L.D., and with Nick Fury's means, Bruce Banner should be coerced and induced by the other party to join S.H.I.E.L.D. Although Hulk is strong enough, he has not reached the point where he cannot be defeated. Nick Fury or promises Banner to help him solve Hulk will join S.H.I.E.L.D. The current Illuminati does not have the strength to snatch people from S.H.I.E.L.D., unless the Sentinel makes a move, which is impossible. In general, Zhang Bai still doesn't want to face the Sentinel. His strength is too strong, and he may not necessarily go to S.H.I.E.L.D. to snatch people. Tony and Zhang Bai looked at S.H.I.E.L.D.'s fighter plane unwillingly and left directly. Zhang Bai, who returned home, began to use the artificial intelligence in the manner to find Mary. Of course, it was not to let her join the Illuminati. For the Illuminati, Zhang Bai still pays more attention to his own strength. The Illuminati is generally a facade for him, but this does not mean that Zhang Bai will do his best for the Illuminati. He will even ensure that his strength far exceeds that of the Illuminati and others. This is also a kind of insurance. Who knows what the Illuminati will become in the future. Even if he is also the founder, it cannot be said that he can definitely control the Illuminati. Professor X, Sentinel, and Mr. Fantastic are not ordinary people. It is not so easy to control the Illuminati. The necessary foundation is strong strength. According to the appearance of Mary in his memory, plus artificial intelligence invading the government database. Nearly 3,000 people with Mary in their names were found in New York alone. There are more in the whole of America. After looking at the pile of information displayed, Zhang Bai began to filter according to some information he knew. Finally, using the technology that Grey Wolf had created to find Tony, he found that Mary, who was most likely to be the female Superman, was actually in the wealthy area of Manhattan. It was less than three kilometers away from his manor, which was ridiculously close. From the information, she was single now and had not met the public relations who helped Hancock. After determining the other party's location, Zhang Bai did not act immediately, but took out a box from the system space. The 2084 items that blackmailed Nick Fury were contained in it. The appearance of these two items was very strange, and it was hard to tell what they were. Because there were many gods on earth in ancient times, Greek mythology, Esir mythology, Indian mythology, and Eastern mythology were not groundless. Just like the Black Panther goddess who protected Wakanda actually existed. In the future timeline, she once appeared in Zeus's pantheon. There is also a mysterious place Kunlun in the east, and there is even a legend of the dragon. Zhang Bai had also read some unofficial history, that is, the celestial god group attacked the earth, and the earth gods fought back. In the end, the celestial god group retreated, and a large number of earth gods fell. The east suffered heavy losses, and even many dragons fell. The dragon bones after the fall of the dragon still contain powerful power and vitality. Absorbing dragon bones can also improve strength and increase lifespan. Now there are traces of the hand and society in Hell's Kitchen in New York. They have been looking for traces of dragon bones, and five of their fingers have lived for hundreds of years. The power and strength of the hand and society, the financial resources are not even inferior to some chables and families. The two things in front of Zhang Bai look like broken objects, and one of them is a very strange metal. The energy contained in it is also different from ordinary energy. He even felt a weak vitality from it, and once thought it was his illusion. But it is obvious that although these two things are 084 objects, they are not worth much. There is almost no trading value. Just as Zhang Bai was thinking, a prompt sound rang. Ding. 
Congratulations to the host for getting a chance to extract a trading object. After learning that he had the opportunity to extract a trading object, he became more determined in his previous guess. As long as a timeline ends, he can get a chance to extract a trading object. But there are still many possibilities, just like he affects the progress of the entire timeline or changes the timeline, etc. Zhang Bai is very surprised to have a chance to extract a trading object now. Grey Wolf is making an aerospace mothership for him, and Tom has now come to his world, but because of playfulness, Zhang Bai did not ask it to make or research anything. After all, its nature is still a cat, and it is impossible for him to ask Tom and Jerry to study various weapons or technologies in the laboratory all the time. Since he regards Tom and Jerry as family, Zhang Bai will naturally treat them well. Now the most urgent task is to draw the next trading object. As Zhang Bai uses the extraction opportunity, the system prompt sound will soon sound again. Ding! Congratulations to the host for the successful extraction. Trading object. Balone. After discovering that the object to be drawn is Balone, he is very interested. There are many good things in the world where Balone is, including magic, qigong, witchcraft, talismans, spells, masks, black air and other extraordinary items. Zhang Bai is a little unsure about the timeline in Balone's world now. He doesn't know whether Balone has traded with the Holy Lord. He is still counting on Balone to help him get the 12 talismans. With the 12 talismans, he can become a little superman, with the immortality of the dog talisman and the recovery of the horse talisman. He can be said to be immortal, and he has already had an idea on how to convince Balone. The Holy Lord traded with Balone through the Golden Rooster King's treasure. Balone would give him some talismans if he helped him find them. In the final analysis, it was just greed for money, and the Holy Lord might not let Balone go after he recovered his strength. Even if Balone had the life to take the Golden Rooster King's treasure, he would not have the life to spend it, but he was different. Although the currencies of the two worlds were not circulated, the value of gold was not cheap. He could use gold to buy Balone to do things for him, and even help Balone improve his strength. Although Balone encountered obstacles and failed everywhere in the hands of Jackie Chan and Xiao Yu, he was not stupid to become the boss of the Black Hand Gang, the largest gang in San Francisco. In contrast, he is more likely to trade with himself. Wallen, what is this thing, who are you? Zhang Bai, you can trade with me through this thing. I come from another world, and I know a lot about you. I believe you are a good trading partner. Have you contacted the Holy Lord now? Wallen, another world. You actually know that statue. What can you trade with me? Zhang Bai, that depends on what you have to trade with me. I have everything you need, wealth, weapons, strength, lifespan, if your chips are big enough, it may not be impossible to become a god. Wallen, hiss, lifespan can also be traded. What do you need, or what can I trade with you? Zhang Bai, what the Holy Lord asked you to find is good. Compared with the treasure of the Golden Rooster King, I can give you more. Although the currencies of our two worlds cannot be circulated, gold and jewelry are both valuable. Is your ambition limited to being a gangster boss? As long as your strength is strong enough, it is not impossible to rule the world in the future. Wallen. Okay, wait until I find the talisman and then we will try to trade, but if I trade the talisman to you, how can I explain to the Holy Lord? It has some ninja subordinates, and I can't deal with them. Zhang Bai. Well, agree to the deal, I will trade you two things that improve your strength, which is my investment in you. Jackie Chan in the old man's antique shop will stop you from looking for the talisman. You can find an excuse to put the blame on Jackie Chan. The old man in the old man's antique shop is a powerful Qigong and magician. Just say that he sealed the talisman. Wallen. Oh, oh, okay, is this candy? Zhang Bai. This thing can improve your physical fitness and reach a state beyond the peak of human beings. Eat it by licking it. I look forward to future transactions with you. At this time, Balone took the initiative to send a message to Zhang Bai, and he was a little surprised and began to reply to Balone. And used his own chips to start trading with Balone. His first target is the 12 talismans of the Holy Lord. Balone didn't believe it at first, but after hearing that lifespan could be traded, he decided to give it a try, anyway, there would be no loss. 
However, after hearing that the other party also needed a talisman, he expressed his doubts, and Zhang Bai also told Malone some things about it. Even the two red candies that Jerry had robbed Tom of to improve physical fitness were traded to Balone as an investment. If Balone's strength is not improved, he can't rob Jackie Chan and others who have the aura of the protagonist, and even if he robs them, he will lose them again for various reasons. Even if Balone does not fulfill his promise in the future, he will only lose two red candies that improve physical fitness, which Tom and Jerry can make. It is not particularly precious to him. For the extraordinary items in Balone's world, he is willing to take this risk. Balone in another world looked at the two red candies in his hand, put them into his mouth with doubt, and began to eat them with licking. Not long after, he felt his body begin to heat up, and it took three minutes to return to normal. In just three minutes, he felt that his strength seemed to have become much stronger, but in order to confirm that it was not an illusion, he bent his desk. The corner of the desk was directly broken by him. This also proved that the red candy was real. Thinking of this, Malone's heart was burning. Just one candy could improve his physical fitness. The other party's words might not be a lie. Thinking of how he would rule the world through transactions in the future, he couldn't help but get excited. As for the life transaction mentioned by Zhang Bai, Malone's lifespan has actually increased a lot now. While his physical fitness has improved, his body the cells in his body were also strengthened, and the activity of the cells increased several times. His lifespan therefore surpassed that of ordinary people. Malone looked at the other candy in his hand. He did not choose to eat it himself, but prepared to give it to his men. It was impossible for him to find all the talismans alone, and then Malone began to gather his men, namely, Joe, Lasu and Affin. Next we are going to find something called a talisman. Whoever finds the talisman first, I will give it to him. That. Boss, although our black hand gang is not very rich, we are not so poor that we can't afford a candy. Stupid. This is not an ordinary candy. Eating it can enhance your physical fitness and improve your strength. Let me show you. Boom. This. Boss, is this thing really that powerful? This is too powerful. Of course, as long as we find the talisman, there will be more than just this, and plenty of money for us. After Wallen summoned Joe, Lasu, and Affin, he told his thoughts and prepared to use this thing to motivate his men. But after hearing Wallen's words, the three looked confused, and Affin spoke to Wallen a little embarrassedly. A candy is not very attractive, but after Wallen explained and showed his strength, the eyes of the three were full of fire. Although their skills are not bad, who doesn't want to be stronger and have more money to spend? Looking at the fire in Joe, Lasu and Affin's eyes, Wallen nodded with satisfaction and began to look for the talisman through the clues given by the Holy Lord. The first one is the chicken talisman, the power of floating, which can make the holder control the floating of objects. It can also play a flying role when used with the rabbit talisman, which can give the holder the ability to control floating. The chicken charm is located in the castle of the crazy Bavarian King Ludwig. After the archaeological team led by Jackie Chan triggered the mechanism in the castle, Jackie Chan picked up a shield from the ground to block the arrow shot by the mechanism and escaped from the castle in order to save his life. The chicken charm was embedded on the shield. After communicating with Balone, Zhang Bai began to think about how to approach Mary. He also had to make himself not look so deliberate. Noticing Wanda and the other two in class, Zhang Bai got up and went to the third floor and entered Tom and Jerry's room. Tom, Jerry, you two help me make some of the red candies you made before, the kind that can improve physical fitness, do you hear me? After entering the room, Zhang Bai told Tom and Jerry his purpose. Now Wanda, Lorna, and Pietro's physical fitness are still ordinary people. In order to prevent Pietro from being shot to death like in the timeline, he decided to strengthen the physical fitness of all three of them. Tom and Jerry nodded when they heard Zhang Bai's words, and patted their chests to show that they would definitely do it. Zhang Bai didn't doubt this, but the two little guys probably had to make a fuss for a while, and then Zhang Bai left from the third floor. Skull Island. A military exploration team took an armed helicopter to enter Skull Island through a special magnetic field. After entering Skull Island, they found many prehistoric creatures from a high altitude. Even dinosaurs existed, and there were some unknown creatures. This made the personnel on the armed helicopter very happy. 
six armed helicopters began to hover in Skull Island. Because they didn't know the situation on the ground, they didn't land at the first time. In addition, because of the special magnetic field, there was no way to contact the outside world here. Colonel, we must land. The geology here is very valuable for research. We need further observation and testing. Okay, find a place to land. Soon, because of the suggestion of the researcher, the colonel on the armed helicopter had to agree. Soon six armed helicopters began to land. After landing, they moved out various instruments to detect the geological problems here, trying to figure out the special magnetic field here. However, the results of these instruments were not satisfactory. In order to further detect the geological problems here, they decided to use bombs to blow up an open space for detection. Little did they know that this behavior was completely seeking death. The colonel immediately arranged for soldiers to set up bombs in the forest not far away. Everyone retreated to a safe position and began to detonate the bombs. Boom. Boom. There were loud noises, and just when the researchers were about to go for detection, a huge black figure appeared not far away. Everyone was surprised to find that it was a huge gorilla, and his size was comparable to the monster that appeared in New York before. Roar. The huge black gorilla roared and then rushed to the position of the crowd. It was King Kong, the guardian of Skull Island. Because these people destroyed the forest, it had aroused its anger. Seeing the huge black gorilla rushing over, several armed helicopters immediately took off. They began to attack King Kong, but the bullets hit King Kong without causing any wounds. King Kong came not far from the armed helicopter, grabbed the tree under his feet and threw it towards the position of the armed helicopter. The hit armed helicopter fell to the ground and exploded. At the same time, the others also fled in all directions, divided into several teams and ran into the forest, trying to avoid King Kong's attack. The colonel commanded the remaining five armed helicopters to attack King Kong through the intercom, and various machine gun attacks hit King Kong. A dozen soldiers in the ground force were also constantly firing at King Kong, but King Kong's attention was all attracted by the armed helicopter, and he didn't pay any attention to the colonel and several people on the ground. Watching King Kong constantly attacking the armed helicopter hovering in the air, the colonel's eyes were full of anger. He didn't expect that there was such a monster on this island, and the armed helicopter no longer hesitated. The missiles hanging on it began to fire and hit King Kong hard. Even King Kong, who was thick-skinned and thick-fleshed, felt pain, but the pain made the anger in his eyes more vigorous. Boom. Roar. The King Kong that was hit by the missile began to dodge the missile attack and kept approaching the armed helicopter. Because of its huge size, it could easily attack the armed helicopter after approaching it. With a slap of its huge palm, an armed helicopter was instantly destroyed. The soldiers inside also died directly. Seeing another armed helicopter being destroyed, the colonel's eyes were about to spit fire, but King Kong would not stop because of this. Not too long after a while, all the armed helicopters were destroyed, and the colonel was pulled away by other soldiers. Without armed helicopters, they would be sending themselves to death if they went to fight the other side. After King Kong destroyed all the armed helicopters, he climbed up the cliff of the mountain next to him and left the scene with a few big jumps. He returned to his residence and continued to guard the entire Skull Island. However, the scientific researchers and several explorers who escaped at the beginning were not so lucky. The various strange creatures on the island had become obstacles to their survival. In other words, they had been regarded as food by various creatures on the island and even the situation of the colonel and others was not good. Even though they had a lot of guns, their firepower was relatively good. The colonel led many soldiers into a bamboo forest, because there were his soldiers in the armed helicopters that King Kong had just destroyed. So he didn't plan to leave here. He wanted to avenge those soldiers, and he was ready to hunt that monster with a lot of bombs in his hands. As for those scientific institute personnel and explorers, they had no intention of searching and rescuing them. Now he was overwhelmed by anger and hatred. He was thinking about how to get rid of the huge monster and avenge his soldiers. Soon, the whole team went deep into the bamboo forest under the leadership of the colonel. Ah. At this time, a soldier suddenly screamed, and when everyone looked back, they saw that the soldier had something similar to bamboo stuck in his mouth. The soldier next to him saw another bamboo moving, and the colonel immediately looked up at the sky. 
I saw a huge spider-like body above them, and the bamboo that the soldier was stabbed to death was the leg of this creature. The slender legs inadvertently took the life of a soldier. Look above, fire. Bang 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 bang. At the colonel's prompt, all the soldiers. All the soldiers looked up and saw the strange creature. Under the command of the colonel, they kept shooting at the creature. The bullets hit the creature's abdomen, which didn't seem to have much effect, but it made the creature go berserk. Eight slender legs began to attack the colonel and others, and directly trampled two soldiers to death, which intensified the colonel's anger and began to think about how to deal with this creature. Cut off its legs. Quick. A flash of inspiration came to him, and then he ordered other soldiers to cut off the long legs of the creature. After hearing this, the soldier took a machete and chopped at one of the legs. As a result, the creature's legs were directly cut off, and other soldiers followed suit. Soon, this creature that looked like a strange spider had no ability to attack. Bang! The colonel and others kept attacking its head, and dark green blood spurted out, and it was soon beaten into a sieve by everyone. After dealing with this strange creature, the colonel and other soldiers breathed a sigh of relief. This place is full of dangers. After leaving the bamboo forest to rest for a while, the colonel led everyone to continue to come up. They killed a strange creature without any danger, but the luck on the other side was not so good. The team composed of several explorers and scientific researchers is now being chased by a group of strange creatures. They look very similar to prehistoric pterosaurs. Everyone ran madly into the depths of the woods. If anyone fell or slowed down a little on the way, they would be caught by those strange creatures directly. After being caught in the sky, they would be eaten by them. The tragic cry made everyone shudder, and the speed of running increased again. Soon they saw a cave not far away. Everyone rushed in without thinking, and the creatures chasing them did not continue to chase them after they entered the cave, and turned around and left directly. Soon, they found something wrong, there seemed to be something in the cave. One of the people from the research institute walked into the cave with a flashlight without fear of death. Several explorers did not follow him in. They did not want to cause any more trouble in this situation. They must find a chance to leave the island as soon as possible, otherwise they will all die here in a short time. They have never seen the creatures on this island. The huge gorilla before scared everyone directly. Several explorers wanted to leave here immediately. Roar. Ah. Help. Save me. Suddenly, a roar came from the depths of the cave, and there was a cry for help. The explorers at the entrance of the cave ran out immediately. According to their survival experience, this should be the cave of a powerful creature. The roar just now was obviously the researchers who alarmed the owner of the cave. Thinking of the terrifying creatures on this island, they ran without thinking. They kept cursing the researcher in their hearts. The other researchers seemed to be the students of the one who just went in, and they hesitated whether to go in and save their teacher. Ah. The next second, a Tyrannosaurus Rex rushed out, with a strong body and bloody teeth. Several people collapsed to the ground with weak legs, and then became food for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The explorers had already run far away, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex had no intention of chasing them, so he turned around and went back to his cave. But their situation was not good either. After entering a strange forest again, the ground was full of remains of various creatures. Now there was no way back. Several people could only continue to move forward with fear, and they were soon noticed by three strange creatures. It was the skeleton giant lizard, also known as the skeleton reptile. The skeleton reptile is a reptile monster similar to a giant lizard. It is the overlord of the underground of Skull Island. It has no basic awe for other kinds of creatures. They have extremely strong bite force, appear and disappear mysteriously, are fierce and brutal, and are particularly corrupt. They once destroyed the King Kong clan and are called, demons. The skeleton reptile is a giant creature with a snake-like tail and a skull-shaped face. It is the most powerful monster on the island and King Kong's strongest opponent. The skeleton reptiles appeared one after another. Not only is their appearance chilling, but their special destructive properties make it easy to imagine the murderous intent hidden in the entire Skull Island. Boom. These three skeleton monitor lizards are not huge in size. They look like juvenile skeleton monitor lizards. Even in their juvenile stage, they are several times larger than humans. A skeleton monitor lizard attacked one of the explorers from the side, but he dodged it. 
However, he did not avoid the attack of the other two skeleton monitor lizards. One of the skeleton monitor lizards bit his legs directly, and the other opened its mouth from the head to bite his chest. As soon as the two skeleton monitor lizards exerted force, the explorer was split in half by the skeleton monitor lizards, and then just eat it directly. Bang! Seeing this, the other explorers used weapons to attack the skeleton monitor lizards, but the bullets still could not cause any damage to these skeleton monitor lizards. The three skeleton monitor lizards immediately attacked the remaining two people. One of them was a woman. The two looked at each other in despair. He took out the grenade, pulled out the safety pin, and started running in another direction. Two seconds later, he threw the grenade towards the position of the skeleton monitor lizard. The grenade exploded when it was about to touch the skeleton monitor lizard. The power and high temperature of the explosion injured the three skeleton monitor lizards. But it was not enough to make them unable to move, and these skeleton monitor lizards would only become more brutal and crazy after being injured. The three skeleton monitor lizards rushed towards the two people frantically, and the female explorer had to face the attack of two skeleton monitor lizards. Bang! Still with no way to retreat, she kept using a pistol to attack the skeleton monitor lizards, and all the bullets hit the wounds of the skeleton monitor lizards. The next second, she was whipped away by the skeleton monitor lizard's tail, and then the two skeleton monitor lizards ate her very cruelly. The miserable screams of his companions made him very painful and frightened. He was tripped by the huge white skeleton under his feet without paying attention, and then the skeleton monitor lizard appeared in front of him. He pounced on it without hesitation and prepared to tear up the food in front of him. Watching the monster pounce on him, he held the last grenade tightly in his hand, pulled the safety pin and threw it into the monster's mouth at the right time. He used all his strength to get up, but before he could walk or run two steps, he was pounced on by the skeleton monitor lizard, and the next moment. Boom. With a loud bang, the grenade exploded from the skeleton monitor lizard's body, and the explorer was also blown to death but at least he also dragged a skeleton monitor lizard to die with him. The luck of several other researchers was much better than theirs. After they escaped from the original geological test location, they did not encounter any danger on the way. They took their cameras to take pictures of various strange creatures along the way. They walked out of the forest and came to a huge lake, where a huge yak was drinking water. It was the Lone Reef Bull Demon, a huge herbivorous creature with four atria that can lurk underwater for four days. The Lone Reef Bull Demon is 13 meters long, with horns 19 meters long and weighs 22 tons. It lives in lakes and large rivers. Its back and flanks are covered with hard bones and dense leaves. The key to maintaining this unique plant and animal creature is that its heart has four atria, two of which are dedicated to supplying blood to the muscle system. The other two provide oxygen-rich chlorophyll for the plants growing on its body. It has evolved the ability to stay underwater for four days at a time, and its coral-like back exposed above the water is a perfect camouflage. It has a gentle temperament but it is also very dangerous when threatened. Most of the super creatures of the Lone Reef Bull Demon have continued the behavior habits of bovine animals. The DNA lineage of Asian water buffalo was found in the early pedigree research. They live in lakes and large river systems. Its coral-like back exposed above the water is a camouflage. As the saying goes, no man is an island, this creature is exactly the opposite. Although it is docile most of the time, don't provoke it. The lone reef bull demon is very threatening when threatened. The two horns that grow firmly from the base of the skull are both a powerful defensive shield and an extremely formidable weapon. Several researchers stood carefully in the distance and used cameras to continuously shoot and record the data of this huge creature, but soon they found the wreckage of an armed helicopter next to it. When they walked over, they found that the driver inside had already died, but there were still a lot of weapons and equipment inside. Although they were all researchers, they also knew that the more weapons and ammunition in this place, the better. Otherwise, once they encounter a terrifying creature, they will all die. The colonel on the other side has brought his soldiers to a good location, where he wants to kill the monster. Revenge for the other soldiers. He ordered everyone to place bombs around, and time passed inadvertently. Soon it was afternoon, and the ready colonel asked the soldiers to detonate several bombs in the forest not far away, and even set fire to the trees to attract King Kong's arrival. Boom. With a loud noise, it soon attracted King Kong's attention. 
After discovering that someone had damaged the forest again, King Kong roared and ran to the location of the loud noise. The colonel was also waiting for King Kong's arrival here. King Kong, who came to the forest, looked at everything around him angrily. What it didn't know was that a huge skeleton lizard appeared behind him, which looked like an adult skeleton lizard. It took advantage of King Kong's inattention to sneak attack from behind him. However, King Kong noticed it, grabbed the head of the skeleton lizard and threw it forward fiercely. Boom. After seeing King Kong being attacked by another monster, the colonel took the lead in using weapons to attack King Kong. The soldiers next to him attacked King Kong with rocket launchers and signal guns. The explosion after the rocket hit King Kong made King Kong in unbearable pain. Roar. With a loud roar, King Kong immediately wanted to attack the colonel and others, but was blocked by the skeleton lizard. With a tail swing, the huge black tail hit King Kong. The next second, he was hit against the mountain wall next to him. At this time, the colonel's eyes were full of fanaticism and madness. Start the bomb. Quick. Boom. Boom. After the colonel's order, the soldiers immediately used the detonator to start the bomb, and then the bombs arranged around King Kong and the skeleton lizard were detonated. The terrifying power and high temperature caused King Kong and the skeleton lizard to be injured, but not seriously. King Kong looked at the position of the colonel and others with anger, and broke free from the restraints of the skeleton lizard. He ran towards the position of the colonel and others, clenched his fists and hit the colonel's body hard, from the head, and the next second the colonel turned into plasma. The bones were smashed into the ground. Seeing this, the soldiers around shot at King Kong frantically. King Kong did not hesitate. He attacked the soldiers with his powerful arms. Soon, all the soldiers died here. The skeleton lizard attacked King Kong again. This time, King Kong did not dodge. The skeleton lizard continued to wrap its tail around King Kong's neck. Then it tried its best to suffocate King Kong to death. King Kong beat the skeleton lizard's body frantically with his hands, trying to make it let go of him and reverse the situation. Boom. A rocket suddenly flew over from a distance and hit the skeleton lizard. King Kong took the opportunity to break free from the skeleton lizard's entanglement. He grabbed its tail and pulled the skeleton lizard hard, and King Kong threw it to the ground again. It did not fall down because of its tenacious vitality. After a while, he stood up and fought with King Kong. At this time, King Kong grabbed the thick iron chain next to him and swung it hard at the skeleton lizard. The propeller at the tail of the iron chain hit the skeleton lizard's head hard, and the skeleton lizard fell on the mountain wall next to it after being hit. Then King Kong used the thick iron chain to wrap around the skeleton lizard's neck, and tried his best to strangle the skeleton lizard with both hands. But it still broke free, but it can be seen that the skeleton lizard's physical strength is now completely inferior to King Kong. King Kong clenched his fists and smashed the skeleton lizard's head hard, and when the skeleton lizard was already very weak. King Kong tried his best to open the skeleton lizard's mouth. In the end, the skeleton lizard's mouth was broken by King Kong, and it fell to the ground without movement. King Kong also sat on the ground to rest, but his eyes were looking at the side, it was the person who used the rocket launcher to attack the skeleton giant lizard before. It was also the scientific researchers who met the lonely reef bull demon. After they left the big lake, they came to the tribe of the aboriginals for no reason. Through the meaning of the pattern records on the aboriginal tribe, they knew that this huge gorilla was the patron saint of this island, protecting the entire island. They also had to prevent the attack of this huge giant lizard, so they would help King Kong. However, the most urgent thing is to leave this island. After a few people looked at each other, they took their weapons into the forest and left here. When they came to the beach, they found that they still couldn't contact the outside world. They could only use the compressed kayak originally in the armed helicopter to leave the range covered by the special magnetic field and contact the outside world. Otherwise, they couldn't leave here at all. This kayak was not enough for them to cross thousands of kilometers of ocean and return to land. Thanks to Chu Ling Yunfei for sending the urging talisman. Thank you. Thanks to Hermione I. Granger for sending milk tea. Thank you. Thanks to Long Lu who loves shrimp meatballs for sending two reminders. Thanks. After these researchers returned to the mainland from Skull Island, their photos caused an uproar, and there was even a video of King Kong fighting with a skeleton lizard. This discovery was reported everywhere internationally, and it also attracted the attention of many organizations.
especially the monarch organization, which wanted to study the Titan Beast. They were preparing to enter Skull Island to capture King Kong, because from the battle between King Kong and the Skeleton Lizard, it was not particularly powerful, so many organizations began to have new ideas. SHIELD, Red House, Monarch Organization, SWORD, and SMARD were all preparing to send teams to Skull Island. Even Tony contacted Zhang Bai and wanted to go to Skull Island to find out. Zhang Bai didn't know much about Skull Island. He only knew that King Kong was the patron saint of Skull Island, and he had been guarding against the underground skeleton lizards entering the ground. The two races were mortal enemies. However, Zhang Bai was quite interested in the skeleton lizard's nest. He wanted to know if the skeleton lizard's nest was in the center of the earth. Zhang Bai has seen Mary several times in the past few days, but he did not disturb her rashly. He just made sure that she was the superwoman he was looking for. The red candies made by Tom and Jerry have been eaten by Wanda, Lorna, and Pietro. While the physical fitness has improved, the ability has also improved a lot. Even when facing the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent team, they can protect themselves. When Zhang Bai did not give a clear answer to Tony. He actually drove a fighter jet directly to Zhang Bai's manor. Tony, what are you doing? Where did the fighter jet come from? Hee hee, of course it was researched and manufactured by my super genius Tony Stock. It's for my special armor. It's a bit dangerous to go to that Skull Island this time, so I brought a lot of armor on the fighter. The fighter jet is controlled by Jarvis, so we don't have to worry. I tell you, Skull Island has a special magnetic field. You can't contact the outside world after you go in. Unless you control the fighter jet yourself, it will definitely crash. Jarvis can't get in. Of course I know, so I backed up Jarvis in the fighter jet. As long as there is energy, the fighter jet can be controlled without connecting to the satellite. Okay, are we going alone? And Rod, I gave him a set of armor as an explanation to the military. After seeing the fighter jet land, Zhang Bai spoke to Tony with a speechless face. Who would have thought that Tony actually got a fighter jet? It looks quite advanced. Hearing Zhang Bai's inquiry, Tony praised himself very arrogantly and narcissistically. Then he told Zhang Bai that this fighter was used to place his various armors to prevent the armors from being damaged in battle and unable to continue fighting. However, when he heard that it was controlled by Jarvis, Zhang Bai told Tony that Skull Island had a special magnetic field. Who would have thought that he actually knew that he had solved this problem, allowing Jarvis to separate a program to control the fighter offline after entering Skull Island. Now Zhang Bai really had nothing to say. However, when he heard that roads would go together, he raised his eyebrows. Tony, like in the original timeline, gave Rhodes his own armor. Zhang Bai had no objection to this, after all, it was not his own thing. Then he walked into the fighter with Tony and greeted Martin and others through the artificial intelligence on the watch. Boom. The fighter slowly took off vertically, and after reaching a certain height, it accelerated and rushed out, then entered the stealth mode and left America, flying to the location of Skull Island. Seeing Tony's proud and complacent eyes, Zhang Bai hesitated and said. Tony, you didn't build this fighter secretly, did you? Ahem, don't mind this kind of thing. If you don't tell me and I don't tell you, they won't know. You are not a human being, right? Tony, you secretly built a fighter in front of me, a lieutenant colonel in the military air force. You are crazy to say it out loud. Man, I believe you will keep it a secret for me. I am doing this to better protect the earth. After hearing Zhang Bai's question, Tony's face froze instantly, and then he said to Zhang Bai with a mysterious face. At this time, Rhodes, who was wearing armor next to him, twitched his mouth and spoke to Tony expressionlessly. Zhang Bai watched this scene with interest. Tony actually secretly built a fighter behind the military's back. Facing Rhodes' questioning, Tony said with a righteous face that this was to better protect the earth. Zhang Bai has a deeper understanding of Tony's shamelessness. The fighter planes were not slow, and soon everyone arrived at the outskirts of Skull Island. They saw many fighter planes and transport planes entering Skull Island through the special magnetic field. Some also crashed due to the special magnetic field. However, when entering Skull Island, Zhang Bai covered the outer surface of the fighter with a layer of magnetic force to prevent the fighter from being affected by those special magnetic fields and eventually crashing. 
Tony and Rhodes stopped joking and became serious when passing through the special magnetic field outside Skull Island. Even with Zhang Bai's magnetic coverage, it was bumped a few times, but it also successfully entered Skull Island. After entering Skull Island, many armed helicopters and transport planes were seen. However, the transport plane had no place to land, so it kept hovering in the air, and the soldiers on it left by parachuting. The supplies were also thrown down directly, and there were still many people coming. In an open space not far away, Zhang Bai also saw the figure of Quince's fighter, which means that S.H.I.E.L.D. has also entered Skull Island. The Hydra should have followed. Okay, Jarvis, invisible suspended in the air waiting for my instructions, guys. We should set off. Okay, sir. Let's go, be careful later, Skull Island is not as simple as you think. If we are not careful, we may all flip over. Okay, let's go. Roar. In the fighter, Tony gave orders to Jarvis to prepare to land with Rhodes and Zhang Bai. At this time, a roar suddenly came out, it was King Kong's roar. The three came out of the fighter and saw that the troops of an unknown organization or country were attacking King Kong. Various heavy weapons and firepower were directed at King Kong. There were also many people from organizations watching the battle nearby. Although there were many strange creatures in Skull Island, King Kong was the most important to the major organizations. The second was the skeleton giant lizard. The appearance of Tony, Zhang Bai, and Rhodes in steel armor also attracted the attention of many people. They were a little surprised, but that was all. Zhang Bai looked at the attacked King Kong expressionlessly. King Kong is not so easy to be defeated by them. I just don't know if other organizations will send powerful superpowers, mutants, etc. to besiege King Kong. Looking from a high place, many organizations are capturing strange creatures in Skull Island. For example, there are surviving Ikaro's wings, swamp giant squids, shock vultures, dead soul island monsters, blade-back jackals, holy tigers and evil water locusts. These creatures are not so easy to catch. Many members of organizations are directly torn to pieces by them. Boom. In a cave not far away, dense skeleton lizards began to appear. Without King Kong's obstruction, they easily came to the ground. Rushing to the temporary camps built by the major organizations, because the skeleton lizards are fierce and brutal, and are not afraid of death, resulting in heavy losses in the temporary camps of the major organizations. A large number of members were torn to pieces by the skeleton lizards, and even the location of S.H.I.E.L.D. was attacked by many skeleton lizards. Tony, Zhang Bai, and Rhodes were suspended in the air without any intention of taking action. Those people were still attacking King Kong. Hancock. You take action quickly, otherwise we can't hold on. I know, I know. Boom. Bang. In the shield camp, Natasha shouted at Hancock in the tent behind her, her tone full of helplessness. Even if the other party came out to perform the mission, they did whatever they wanted and didn't obey the command at all. This made Natasha very dissatisfied. But Hancock still walked out of the tent slowly, and then attacked the skeleton giant lizard attacking the camp. With Hancock's action, the skeleton giant lizard on the shield side was quickly solved, which also reduced the pressure on others. Hancock naturally knew about Natasha's dissatisfaction, but he was too lazy to listen. How could he not have any objections to asking him to listen to a woman who was much weaker than him? Zhang Bai smiled slightly when he saw this scene. Although Hancock is careless and unruly, he is still proud in his heart. Nick Fury is probably confused. He asked Hancock to listen to Natasha. Even if Natasha is an excellent agent, so what? How can a strong man not be unhappy to listen to the command of a weak person? Natasha is indeed good-looking and very charming, but it is only limited to the case that men fall for her tricks, otherwise she is just a lamb to be slaughtered. Just like Zhang Bai directly broke Natasha's shin bone before, facing an opponent who is stronger and more rational than her. Her charm has no effect. Even if it works, it is very likely that she will be imprisoned directly and then become a plaything. Roar. King Kong was furious by the attacks of the crowd. He beat his chest with both hands and roared. His eyes began to turn red, his body began to swell, and his strength, speed, and physique were all increasing. Zhang Bai smiled slightly. How could King Kong, who could fight Godzilla, not be special? After all, Godzilla has the ability to breathe atomically. King Kong's origin is not simple either. Apart from other things, its bloodline alone should be very powerful. 
At this time, Zhang Bai saw a few blood red flowers on a mountaintop not far away. It was a bit like the blood orchid in his memory, so he didn't think much about it. He controlled the armor and flew to the top of the mountain, and Tony and Rhodes beside him followed. When he arrived at the top of the mountain, he found that there were actually many creatures guarding this thing around, which made Zhang Bai more certain of the guess that it was a blood orchid. He slowly walked out of the armor and attacked the beasts directly. Two scarlet lasers shot out of his eyes. Boom. The laser instantly hit one of the beasts, and then dark clouds began to appear in the sky, followed by lightning. Zhang Bai, suspended in the air, controlled the lightning in the sky to attack the beasts below. He was determined to get these blood orchids. Snap. Boom. Tony and Rhodes, who came over, also began to attack these giant beasts, and all kinds of shells on the armor were fired at the same time. These giant beasts were bruised and battered, but they still refused to leave here. Zhang Bai used telekinesis to wrap the blood orchids from the surface to Zhang Bai's hands. After Zhang Bai got the blood orchids, the giant beasts just now immediately rioted, and their injuries were also recovering rapidly. He put the blood orchids into the system space casually, and Zhang Bai no longer held back. Two scarlet lasers shot out from Zhang Bai's eyes. The energy that burst out with all his strength instantly penetrated the bodies of the giant beasts. Many of the giant beasts were solved by Zhang Bai, and then a chill appeared, and the blue freezing power gushed out from Zhang Bai's hands. Then other giant beasts were gradually frozen by Zhang Bai. In order to completely freeze them, he was still reinforcing. In the end, all the giant beasts on the top of the mountain were solved. Accurately in fact, the entire mountain top was frozen. Tony and Rhodes also came to Zhang Bai at this time, and asked Zhang Bai with curiosity in their eyes. What is that? Blood orchid, something that may extend life, but it depends on whether the research can be successful. Walter. Extend life. Are you sure? Of course, there are companies researching this thing, but it is not so easy to succeed in research. Maybe we can collect some genes of organisms for research. Faced with Tony's inquiry, Zhang Bai did not hide it and directly told him one of the effects of blood orchid. The reason why Zhang Bai needs to find orchids is that this thing has a fatal attraction to animals and can also promote the evolution and growth of animals. He plans to take it back for Tom and Jerry to see. If they can do it, it can also make Tom and Jerry grow up. It would be good if something that can extend lifespan can be researched. He doesn't care much about things like lifespan. Extending lifespan is difficult for others, or perhaps impossible. It was very simple for him. Apart from other things, the red candies made by Tom and Jerry alone could increase longevity, and the hands and the dragon bones that he would always look for could also increase longevity. There were a lot of things in Marvel that could increase longevity, and he could trade with other worlds, so longevity was very easy for him to obtain. The dog charm in the world of Valone could even make Zhang Bai's life eternal. Hearing that it might increase longevity, road next to him was full of shock. At this time, Zhang Bai's face suddenly changed because he saw Hancock attacking King Kong. If only the firepower of these organizations attacked King Kong, it might not be defeated. But facing Hancock, King Kong's situation was a bit dangerous. It would be fun to be taken back by S.H.I.E.L.D. He has a good impression of both Kong and Godzilla. If he can subdue them, they will become one of his fighting forces. If he is taken back by S.H.I.E.L.D., who knows what means S.H.I.E.L.D. will use to study or control Kong. In any case, Kong cannot be taken back by S.H.I.E.L.D. If S.H.I.E.L.D.'s strength continues to increase, he will be the one who suffers. As an uncontrollable factor, Nick Fury will not give up on dealing with him, not to mention that he has blackmailed him once. Boom. After just one encounter, Kong was blown away by Hancock, which shocked the people around him. After Kong got up, he looked at Hancock with anger in his eyes, but his chest had already been sunken. It seems that this caused a lot of damage to Kong. Looking at Kong's appearance, Zhang Bai was thinking about whether to call Tom and Jerry over. The two of them may not be able to beat the Sentinel now. But it's still possible to beat Hancock. Before, Tom swung a 100-ton hammer to hit Jerry in the manor. Bang. Before Kong could launch an attack, he was blasted away by Hancock again the next second crashed into a mountain wall, and fell to the ground unable to get up. At this time, other people from S.H.I.E.L.D. also walked towards Kong with special anesthetics, sighed slightly, 
and used their telepathic abilities to communicate with Tom and Jerry, asking them to come. Tony, we can't let S.H.I.E.L.D. take King Kong away, otherwise something bad will happen. Although I am willing to trip up S.H.I.E.L.D., it seems that we can't beat them. What else will happen? Tom and Jerry will deal with Hancock, don't worry. King Kong is the guardian of this Skull Island, and it is also the guardian that prevents the skeleton lizards from coming to the surface from underground. If S.H.I.E.L.D. takes King Kong away, let alone whether they will use any means to control King Kong, who will deal with the skeleton lizards at that time. An adult skeleton lizard can be evenly matched with King Kong. No one knows how many skeleton lizards there are underground, and I don't know how powerful the king of the skeleton lizard race is. But it will definitely beat the current King Kong. It is only in adolescence now, not yet adulthood. If these skeleton lizards reproduce in the ocean and enter the mainland, it will be even more difficult to deal with. After making the decision, Zhang Bai spoke to Tony next to him. Tony nodded to Zhang Bai's words, and then asked with a puzzled look. Then Zhang Bai told Tony about the underground skeleton lizards. No one knew how many skeleton lizards there were underground, but it was indeed a disaster that could explode. This thing has a very strong reproductive ability. King Kong is the only one left in his race, but there are still a lot of skeleton lizards. King Kong himself probably doesn't know how many skeleton lizards there are. After hearing Zhang Bai's words, Tony and Rhodes' expressions became serious. After saying that, Zhang Bai didn't care whether Tony and Rhodes would take action or not. Two scarlet lasers directly cut off the shield members who were close to King Kong. Even Natasha was almost hit by Zhang Bai's laser. Zhang Bai's attack also directly attracted everyone's attention. After all, given the terrifying strength that S.H.I.E.L.D. had just demonstrated, almost no one dared to compete with S.H.I.E.L.D. for King Kong. Now someone actually killed the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent directly. Natasha came back to her senses and looked at Zhang Bai with anger and said. What are you doing? Do you want to go to war with S.H.I.E.L.D.? Go to war. Don't think S.H.I.E.L.D. is so powerful. I'm not scared. You can't take King Kong away. Anyone who gets close will die. The same goes for you. I'm very curious about what makes you so arrogant. I promise to stuff your head into your ass. Tom, Jerry, did you hear that? Boom. Zhang Bai said disdainfully to Natasha's question, and bluntly said that anyone who dared to get close would die. The last sentence was said directly to Hancock. Hearing Zhang Bai's nonsense, Hancock mocked Zhang Bai with an unhappy face, but Zhang Bai called Tom and Jerry very calmly. The next second, a black hammer with a hundred tons written on it smashed Hancock away and crashed into a mountain. This stunned everyone. Because they saw a blue and white cat standing in the air, holding a balloon-like hammer and knocking Hancock out. Because he had to guard against S.H.I.E.L.D. and take S.H.I.E.L.D. into consideration all the time, Zhang Bai was already very upset. He no longer wanted to take S.H.I.E.L.D. into consideration, which was why he just shot and killed the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. At this time, Tony and Rhodes also controlled the armor to come to Zhang Bai's side. Boom. Hancock flew out of the mountain with blood hanging from the corner of his mouth and punched Tom. As a result, Jerry suddenly appeared in the sky in front of Tom. Appear. Holding a hammer exactly like Tom's, he blasted Hancock, who was about to hit Tom, into the ground. Natasha and other agents raised their weapons and aimed at Zhang Bai. The next second, the metal on their bodies turned into sharp blades and pierced their throats in an instant. Only Natasha escaped with her extraordinary physical fitness. Hancock on the other side rushed out from the ground, looking at Zhang Bai, Tom and Jerry with a very gloomy face. He didn't expect that he would be beaten by a cat and a mouse. He just spoke in the current scene, like a clown. Tom saw Hancock appear again and was about to attack, but Hancock used his flying ability to grab Natasha on the ground and rushed out of Skull Island. The two blows just now had already injured him, and with Natasha's gesture, he could only take Natasha away from here. Tom, get something that can heal the wound. Zhang Bai's eyes narrowed slightly after watching the other party leave, and he turned around and asked Tom to get something that could heal the wound. Tom ran to the side and fiddled with it for a while. After a while, he took out a bottle of soda and handed it to Zhang Bai, then climbed onto Zhang Bai's back. Jerry also jumped onto Zhang Bai's shoulder and sat there, looking like he was going to die. Zhang Bai shook his head and came to King Kong with the soda, using his psychic ability to communicate with King Kong directly. 
Then he poured the soda into King Kong's mouth. Soon, all of King Kong's injuries recovered. He looked at Zhang Bai with his two big black eyes. There was actually someone who could communicate with him, and it was a human. Because Zhang Bai protected him, King Kong was very kind to Zhang Bai. Roar. The next moment, he roared at the members of other organizations. Seeing that the situation was not good, everyone immediately got up and left, ready to report the situation here back. Zhang Bai had to report the cat and mouse he owned. Seeing everyone leaving, Zhang Bai knew that it would not be long before the major organizations would turn their attention to him. Tom and Jerry's abilities were too tempting for them. Tony, scan King Kong's body, and use vibranium to build him a defensive armor and a weapon when you go back. Walter. Zhang, I have money, but I can't afford enough vibranium to build him an armor, and that thing is in short supply. Just scan it, and I'll take you to buy it. If they don't sell it, I'll rob it. You may not know that the entire country of Wakanda is vibranium, but they just covered it up. After thinking for a while, Zhang Bai spoke to Tony next to him. He was going to use vibranium to build a suit of armor for King Kong. Of course, it was not the kind of Tony, but a suit similar to armor. And weapons. Because King Kong was saved by Zhang Bai, it was very friendly to Zhang Bai. It can be said that if Zhang Bai wants King Kong to take action, it will hardly refuse if the skeleton giant lizard does not appear. What's more, Zhang Bai is the first human who can communicate with it. In order to prevent King Kong from being attacked by other organizations again, he plans to improve King Kong's strength. However, Tony was speechless after hearing Zhang Bai's words. He couldn't afford so much vibranium with his money. Besides, there was not so much vibranium on the market. Zhang Bai's next sentence surprised Tony. Yes, Zhang Bai was going to Wakanda. To be precise, it was to rob. Where could he afford so much vibranium, and Wakanda would never sell it to him. He was too timid before, but now he realized that he had Tom and Jerry. There was almost nothing on the earth that could hurt him, and he would be resurrected by Tom and Jerry if he died. So he had nothing to worry about. Not only King Kong, but also Godzilla, he also planned to contact each other. Now his relationship with King Kong is almost a friend, and he also plans to make friends with Godzilla. It is not difficult to gain favor in front of them. Godzilla needs nuclear energy, and King Kong needs to protect Skull Island and guard against the skeleton giant lizard. Besides, Godzilla has a partner who seems to have not died because of Godzilla yet. If he can save Mothra's life at that time, it is entirely possible to become friends with Godzilla. Don't think that Godzilla and King Kong are not strong now. If he strengthens King Kong and Godzilla, such as King Kong wearing armor and holding weapons. Crimson Godzilla with Mecha Godzilla's younger brother, etc. With the Wanji trading system, he can give King Kong and Godzilla unlimited possibilities and the ability to become infinitely stronger. Walter. Wakanda. Isn't that a poor country? Their technology is hundreds of years ahead of the international level. When you were still wearing armor, they had already developed armor similar to nanotechnology. Also, don't report Wakanda's affairs to the military. If I know, I will erase your memory. I promise not to tell. Hey. Don't be like that. I believe in Rod. He is one of us. Really. Tony looked at Zhang Bai with surprise and shock. He couldn't believe that Wakanda actually had a lot of vibranium. At the same time, Zhang Bai also told Tony that Wakanda's technology was hundreds of years ahead of the international level, and threatened Rod not to report Wakanda's situation to the military. If the military knew that Wakanda had vibranium, the world war would probably come again. If this happened, Zhang Bai could only erase the memory of Rod and the insider. This scared Rod directly, and he immediately promised not to tell anyone. Tony next to him also vouched for Rod. He said that Rod was one of his own. Zhang Bai glanced at Rod and nodded. It was true that Rod was one of his own now, but it might not be the case in the future. In the future, Rhodes was directly replaced by the Skrulls, and he didn't even attend Tony's funeral. After saying something to King Kong, the few of them returned to the fighter and then left Skull Island. Shield. Hancock took Natasha away from Skull Island and went directly back to the Shield headquarters. Natasha reported everything to Nick Fury, and his face changed drastically when he heard that Zhang Bai's pet was so powerful. A cat and a mouse actually beat Hancock. 
When Natasha left the office, Nick Fury looked at the quantum pager in his hand with a very solemn face, and finally chose not to call Captain Marvel back. Even if he called Captain Marvel back, it would be useless. Zhang Bai couldn't even do anything to Ancient One now. The Captain Marvel in this world is not the Captain Marvel in the comics. She probably can't even beat Ancient One who has the Time Stone. There is no way to do anything to Zhang Bai, not to mention that the Illuminati still has a Sentinel. Now the Sentinel's strength, it is very easy to control Captain Marvel. After returning to the manor, Zhang Bai found that there were indeed many more people monitoring around him. He sneered and activated his telepathy. All the monitoring personnel died suddenly, and then Zhang Bai began to use his psychic ability to explore the identity of Hydra in S.H.I.E.L.D. Whether it will be exposed depends on Nick Fury's reaction after this incident. If he is ready to deal with himself, Zhang Bai will directly publish the identity of Hydra with a large number of heads in S.H.I.E.L.D. on the internet, so that Nick Fury will not have the energy to deal with him. At this time, Grey Wolf contacted Zhang Bai. Grey Wolf, the aerospace carrier you want has been manufactured. Because you want it a little urgently, there are no large attack weapons on it. However, its concealment function is very powerful, and it can also perform space jumps. Super energy defense, etc. Zhang Bai, I am very satisfied that it was manufactured so quickly, thank you. Just tell me what you need. Grey Wolf, for the time being, there is nothing. I will tell you when I need it. Zhang Bai, okay, you're welcome. After learning that the aerospace mothership had been manufactured, Zhang Bai was very happy and communicated with Grey Wolf for a while. He saw that the aerospace mothership had been traded. Fortunately, Zhang Bai's things went directly into the system space instead of appearing in front of him, otherwise the whole villa would be blown up by the aerospace mothership. Then Zhang Bai left the manor and came to the deep mountains in the distance. He took the aerospace mothership out of the system space, and a huge aerospace mothership appeared in front of Zhang Bai. The hole is even bigger than his manor. After entering the interior, the shielding function was activated, and after setting the destination, various functions began to be studied. There are many black technologies in the entire aerospace mothership, most of which were studied by Grey Wolf himself, including various strike weapons, defensive energy, and short distance single body transmission. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.